Okay, guys, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I'll be your friendly, um, I guess, your Elder, elder Scroll Master uh, for tonight, because tonight we are going to be returning to a recent channel favorite, and that is the unofficial Elder Scrolls role-playing game, the third edition, um, a fan product that has been put together, and really to call it a fan product is to undercut how incredibly polished and cool this game is. Um, we have run this a couple of times on the channel over the last uh, month or so, and uh, you can find uh, copies of the rule books for the third edition and the RR edition, which is two kind of ones that release in parallel, uh, by following a link in the description of this video. So if you, this uh, game does look pretty cool to you, then you can feel free to follow over there. This game is also, um, for those who may be joining us for our Kingmaker game, uh, apologies for uh, that we weren't able to carry on with the game. We Some scheduling issues came up, uh, and we decided to take this game for a spin once again. Um, I am intending on running an actual proper adventure with this at some point soon, but tonight we are once again going to be returning to a dungeon and uh, seeing how how our heroes fare against uh, whatever lurks within there. And, and speaking of that, let me introduce you to the lucky heroes who are going to be plumbing the depths of some forgotten barrow uh, deep in the wilderness of uh, Tamriel's northernmost province. I'll go with the order. I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and who you're playing tonight. First up, we've got John. Hey everyone, I'm John, and uh, this one is Gadar Frostfang, <laughs> master of stealth, healing magic, and you will see him once again on one of his mini, mini cat lives. <laughs> Very nice. And joining him is George. Hey, everybody, I'm George. Uh, I am playing this for only my second time now, uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit behind. Uh, but I am once again playing Nizran, who is a red guard. Um, he is a mage. Uh, and I don't know how you describe it exactly, but he's the star sign. The uh, magician star sign. Yeah. 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 One of the things you get, I can't remember, I think it starts in uh, Morrowind, but from Morrowind and I think uh, Oblivion the as well. Standing Stones. Yeah. You pick, well, yeah, the Standing Stones where you pick your, um, your th oh, is it your star sign you pick there or is it something in else? Sky in Skyrim, it's your standing stones, but yeah. they are related to star signs in Morrowind and Oblivion. Yeah, and it, what it is is just it's another way to sort of alter your character. It's a reflection of uh, something in, in in universe. It would be being born under a certain sign. And for the Khajiit, it's actually something even more. The phase of the moon dictates what kind of physiology the individual Khajiit has. Ranging this one from, was blessed with the star sign of the lover and given the form proper. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. Uh, so then, um, that is where. So why why we are returning once again to Skyrim? I mean, it isn't because I use every opportunity to return to this game, but uh, I mean, well, it, it, two things can be true all at once. So. That's true. Um, we uh, apologies for we had to start an, an hour late uh, today anyway for other circumstances, and then we yeah. spent about a half hour just getting up to speed. And we are going to jump in. So let me just reintroduce you guys to. Tamriel. Oh, you know, I've left. Sorry, guys. This is where we have been for the last. I left you lingering in that uh, dungeon uh, before. So let me bring you over to the map of Tamriel. So once again, this is the setting of the Elder Scrolls games released to date. Uh, this is a map of the continent of Tamriel on the world of Hern. And. Great map. The oh, I absolutely love this map. It's amazing. Our adventure takes place uh, in or around the year 732 in the Second Era. Uh, this is about 150 years after the events of uh, the Elder Scrolls Online role-playing game. It is about 150 years or 100 or so years before the rise of a very, very important uh, emperor. Um, it is the Tiber Septimus, who will be have a huge influence over... Uh, the history of uh, the of Tamriel in general, the empire, and uh, in fact, even changed the world at one point due to his uh, the legacy of his actions uh, to come. This is around 1600 years, or give or take, before the events of the Oblivion game, before Arena, before Daggerfall, and this is 
uh, maybe it was 1400 before that and about 1600 before the events of Skyrim. At this time, there is no unified empire. It is split into two separate rival factions. And at this time, what would be a unified Skyrim has one uh, notable exception, which is in Falkyrie. Fal the, um, the, what do they call it? The, um, not Lodge, uh, I can't remember offhand the name of the political unit. The, well, whatever it is, the um, kingdom. Oh, actually, it is the kingdom at this point. The kingdom of Falkreath currently is separate from all the other Yaldums in uh, Skyrim, but it remains the most common entry point into the northernmost province. Okay. One thing we didn't talk about last time was kind of what brought your characters here. Khajiit typically, I think, uh, John, you will already know this, but just George for your edification, are more typically found in a, a very... Stands of Elsewhere. Yeah. Elsewhere, which is down here. This one is a long way from home. Yeah. And the Red Guard typically are from here. The Red Guard originally are actually from another continent that at was sunk by renegade sorcerers or sorcerer kings. Um, the Red Guard have a strong martial tradition and then this bay in here, or the sea in here, this is typically kind of thought of as the Mediterranean of the, uh, uh, the Tamriel region. The north up here is covered, uh, is generally populated by um, a culture called the Bretons, which are a cross of uh, human uh, with elvish blood. And the they have a very magical tendency towards them. So I know, George, you would be loath to be playing a magical sword type person, but... Um, <sighs> Magic, but, I, but okay. Magic but is a lot. <laughs> okay, one, one thing I love about this region up here, this is basically the Transylvania part of the entire yeah. Mediterranean right there. Well, and the, vampires uh, and ghosties. And, oh, God, mm -hmm. the story, the backstory for the vampires are very cool in the game as well. The backstory for pretty much everything in the setting is amazing, but I don't want to get too lost in, in the minutia here, but what I would say is that in Nisran, for you to be a mage is a very unusual thing, but for you to be equally uh, capable with a sword definitely is mm -hmm. not. Um, mm -hmm. The the Redguard culture owes a fair, more than a little to kind of uh, um, feudal... Japan era kind of uh, worship of honor and weapon use. And, and as such, you know, you, uh, you could perhaps imagine a, a conversation with a Red Guard father that would go along the lines of, fine, I'll pay for the fucking wizard school, but you are learning to use a fucking sword. A little right. bit of piracy too, and you're right there. There definitely is some <laughs> piracy in your uh, past as well too. But you guys okay. have come instead to the northernmost realms. At this time, Skyrim, at times is part of the empire. At times is a more stable uh, part of the empire. That is not the era that we find ourselves in. This is the province of Skyrim. And at present, um, there is a lot of uh, internecine warfare between the different uh, Yaldums. There are, um, Falkreath itself is not even part of Skyrim right now. It is allied with uh, a group called the Collodian uh, Estates, which has been in place now for 250 years or so. So the prospect of the empire coming back together is probably not even a, an idea in anyone's mind, but, um, and the one of the local guilds in uh, Tamriel proper, uh, there have been around for uh, centuries at, by this point, two important organizations for adventurers. One of them is the Fighters Guild, it originated from being a, a way for the emperor to basically disarm a bunch of rival um, noble house families. So to prevent yet another noble house rising up and kicking out the current emperor once they were deemed to be weak, they forced the disbandment of all of them, but uh, created this thing called the fighter guild. So nobles could hire 
uh, mercenaries effectively to go and deal with the problems that their personal armies were uh, normally used to to treat things like bandits or you know tr troublesome monsters barrows that kind of shit over the centuries it has gone less from uh, being serviced by the nobles though that plays an important role all the way down to i have rats in my basement and i need to hire someone to kill them We'll go to the Fighters Guild and you may find some fledgling adventurer desperate enough to hire on to go and try and do that. The um, Fighters Guild, though, typically since um, the time of the First Era has not really had a huge presence in Skyrim because of an organization called the Companions. Unfortunately, in recent years, corruption has ran uh, rampant through the companions and as such um, you can imagine what happens when the person who's in charge of hiring mercenaries and helping out the little folk and helping out you know noble families or lesser jarls when they are corrupt as fuck um, you effectively have nobody you can hire unless you can afford to buy them off in perpetuity so as a result you guys came here and Falkreath did have a presence of the Fighters Guild at this time. And in Falkreath, the two of you hired on. Even though you're a mage, Nizran, the Fighters Guild does not um, discriminate. There is a Mages Guild that is also a an important source of um, spreading uh, not only you know the accessibility of magical uh, devices or materials, but also teaching and so forth. You can hire on through the Mages Guild as well. They may have missions for you to do, but typically the Fighters Guild is a more reliable source for that stuff in this era. Um, it's also okay. worth noting to get a sense of uh, Tamriel has a comparable literacy rate to modern day North America. It is very, very common for people to know how to read, which means there is a shit ton of books that are all over the uh, the Empire and have been in place for a very, very long time. Magic is also cool. ubiquitous. So it is not unusual to be able to go and buy equipment or materials or whatever else that you need from the local you know, shop. Um, magic can be quite dangerous and there are aspects uh, and elements of it that are definitely outlawed, like necromancy. Um, I don't know. Is my camera showing? Am I looking directly at you, George? I'm not. Uh, I was gonna say <laughs> I, uh, I, I. I don't have that on my sheets right now. But um, <laughs> magic is also something you can easily hire on. So, like, just to keep in mind, you can recover materials and you can sell them to a local alchemist because there are guilds for that as well. And because of that long-standing, you know, there was a, a widespread empire at one point. The elves had a the which are the um. The myrrh, uh, there are all the different uh, sub races of elves, all have myrrh as the uh, suffix. So it's the Altmer are the high elves, the Bosmer are the wood elves, the uh, Dunmer are the dark elves, uh, the Dwemer are the dwarves who went missing in the first mm. era after one climactic battle and one tragic turn of uh, magic. Um, there are the uh, ice elves, which whose name I can't remember offhand. Do you remember, John? Since they're in Skyrim for sure. Yes, they are the Falmer. Falmer, right, 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 right. But I'm going to get lost in uh, fucking three hours of uh, talking about yeah. lore in this. I think we've got uh -oh. ourselves situated here. Huh. So let's talk about what you guys have done. I think you guys have hired on, and I think you guys uh, have hired on to assist. There is a woodsman who is convinced that he has found the key to riches. Well, technically, not the key. But he has found a lock, and he's hopeful that you guys may be able to, if you at least identify where this lock is, tell him if he's crazy, and then perhaps bring him riches. The tale of this lock starts with a aborted uh, hunting expedition, where he was hunting for things in an area that he had been assured that no animals go near, but he was certain that some other hunters were just playing tricks on him. And let me bring you to the uh, woods of Skyrim. This, I know guys, is gonna be a bit uh, jarring to be playing in once again a, uh, you know, forest filled mountainous wood, uh, snowy terrain, but uh, I'd ask that you guys stretch yourselves and be uh, comfortable with the unlikely. Let me get rid <laughs> of our two adventurers we've got here. Are they in my GM Slayer? Where 
are they? There we go. They're in the token layer. Let me get these fellers out of the way here and bring you guys over. The tale that this hunter told you is that he was hunting in an area where he was told not to. And as all young folks sometimes are prone to do, he ignored the advice of his elders and thought that they were just keeping the best hunting spots to themselves. It turns out when he found the troll tracks that were uh, in the region, he had a better sense of why they told him not to go there. Um, fortunately, in his blind panic, he stumbled up a, um, a, a bit of a, a rocky surface and then fell through and found a set of stairs leading down into darkness. What he found down there were one or two coins. And where there are some coins, he figured there must be more. He spent a great deal of time wandering in the darkness there until his kind of um, ready-made uh, torch or uh, the torch he had put together was ready to sputter out. He was about ready to give up. He did find, he said, constructed walls, making him think this was a lost tomb of the Nords, one of the, the folk who make, their, uh, who make their home up here. And dating back to the early first era, even before that, the Nords would uh, place their tombs, tombs of their kings and other, or jarls, I guess, specifically, and kings, their champions, all across the mountains of Skyrim. And as such, he thought this was something very interesting, but on an even more interesting note, he found a giant metal, perhaps bronze, or perhaps something else. But what he described it as was a large metal door with a lock in it. He could not get beyond it, but it had the look of something either of the Nords or perhaps even from the long lost dwarves. Whether it be the dwarves or the Nords, there should be uncounted riches in there. And much as he enjoys uh, hunting uh, for a living, and risking attacks by trolls and having to deal with the elders in his uh, community, he decided to put some coins together and propose a split with some hired mercenaries. He'd give you the location of this if you would go down and collect whatever you can. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'm well acquainted with that issue. Yeah, yeah. I might be. <laughs> so... How long do you think you two were okay. traveling together before you hired on with this task? I will tell you, you were broke beforehand, so I'm going to take mm. the leap of uh, faith to say that you probably did take this task. Like, <laughs> yeah. this, one, this one tends to have issues with traders and merchants because they have a mistaking impression this one is abandoned. So this one signed up with the Red Guard for particular reasons regarding that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I'm kind of, at a, it, it just, I've been traveling, um, I hadn't put much thought into this character before we started playing. Uh, <laughs> I have okay. an unfair advantage. I really like this character. I've thought about it a lot. <laughs> I like the character. I just don't know the world as well or at all. Well, let me ask that. What does Nisran want? Does he want to uncover lost magics? Does he want to just get rich? Um... Does he want to yeah. escape the shadow of some family or something like that? You know how there's, uh -huh. there's a funny story in Skyrim. One of the quests is to retrieve a family sword from one of the Red Guards in Whiterun. Yeah. Which could be... Um, yeah, I think I think he's looking for lost knowledge, even to differentiate from like magic specifically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um... And, uh, you know, he's he's been struggling because he hasn't been able to find, you know, much of anything that hasn't already been, you know, tombs and lost sites that have already been picked through a million times. There's just nothing left. He's not finding anything. And so he's down on his luck. He's run out of coins. Um, and uh, he's traveled far afield. He's in a place he's never been to before. 
Um, so he's like just in that down on his luck at the point where he needs um, some kind of um, income. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think he there, he he feels more comfortable around the the fighters guild than he does the wizards for some okay. reason. Um, it would be so, more of yeah. what he would have had some kind of formal training in an academy of, of uh, in all likelihood, but um, he also would have grown up around martial types morally not even in the necessarily the direct family which could be the case but just in general it is a much more martial inclined culture than say the elves that incorporate magic into a lot of the ultimate at least who incorporate a lot of magic into a lot of their everyday lives and stuff like that that makes sense i i, uh, that, I think that sounds good to me okay so it is um it has been about four days uh, since you guys have hired on in falkreath uh you were in the actual Kingdom of Falkreath at one point, and then let me bring you over, bring the map over here. Come here. You came to Helgen, a much smaller but fortified city, very important because it is on the road uh, in from the um, uh, the Collodian. Uh, is it? The, I if it's the Collodian Estates or if it's the other part of the. Uh, uh, Splinter Empire at this point, but in any event, uh, you were making your way into Halgen because it was shortly outside of there, or sorry, no, it was shortly outside of Riverwood. Uh, so it has been from Falkreath itself to Halgen to Riverwood. You've been traveling for about nine days now. You still have all your money and all your funds that are on you, and you are now on your way out to the um, to the actual um, Barrow. Let me ask you this, guys. What is of more interest to you? Getting to the Barrow or getting along the way? Or getting there? Um, it's what you, whatever you think, Jonathan. I can go either way. Since we're kicking the tires on this, it will be a matter of dungeon crawling or do we want to do something on the way as well? Well, this one thinks that the cold of Skyrim is a deadly adversary that we should prepare for. <laughs> so I think getting there would be the fun part. Okay. I mean, it sounds like if I'm if I'm getting this correct, that there hasn't been much of overland travel so far that you guys have done, or is or is correct. That We've oh, done okay, yeah. one thus far one. where... Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gadar got thrown to the ground by a wolf. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, well, that, why I did not take one me? out beforehand, but yeah. He okay, did take well, one still. out. He, he did not uh, anticipate the wolves getting quite well, as close as what he look, did. I've had, this I, one forgets how big the wolves of Skyrim truly are. Yeah. Well, look, in lots of games, we have characters who get dragged away by dogs and wolves. and <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> any kind this of four-legged animals. So. Trauma response. Trauma yeah. response. Um, so I like the idea of Overland too, but okay. for that reason that there hasn't been much of it. Let's just let's, let's sure. have fun with it. So, see, so see let what's me different. place you down here. Uh, I'll grab your tokens. And uh, for those listening at home, uh, we're again we're still um, kind of kicking the tires on the system and and getting a feel for it. Uh, we I do intend to get a more proper adventure and uh ideally an ongoing game using this system at some point but for now we're just uh we want to get a, a real comfortable feeling with uh the system what's that that uh, pusher say you give them a taste for free and then they'll come back and uh well <laughs> something along those lines i i have no idea the first <laughs> taste is always free. <laughs> all right let me bring you over to the trail that you guys are going as a reminder Oh, you know what I should do? Hold up, I'm a dummy. I should just grab the tokens from the dungeon because those ones have the, uh, your auras marked on them already. Right. Yeah. So, um, Gadar, I think, is actually trained in uh, survival. So he, I am assuming, is the one who has been kind of leading the way. This one is an apprentice in survival. Nice. Okay. Mm. They do not let us, uh, uh, this this one out of elsewhere without such training. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. I was very close to getting an elsewhere session set tonight too. I got a, I got I have a thumbnail set for a couple of different locations right now. This one and is sad. To feel yeah, the you know what it was is I, didn't, I, I haven't boned up on my uh elsewhere lore uh yet so I, I was a little self-conscious about using that as our location uh and i also had these maps ready already so what's but, great about uh this whole thing is uh when you show the map of tamriel i play elder scrolls online sometimes i've been in 90 percent of these areas yeah, and they're... actually running through them well i've only so. spent f um time in uh the somerset isles which i oh. just fucking love because it's you know i kind of dig on uh elf stuff uh so yeah the, uh, the high elves and before thalmors were really big dicks yeah they're all Still assholes bit, it's amazing bit, but yeah. <laughs> like... um okay so let me bring you guys over here and i think i might actually have let's see oh i don't in here hold on guys we need to give you the uh, full uh that was the rock in which this one almost lost one of his lives <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was tough. There we are, guys. This should. Oop, there we go. In the mountains of Skyrim, the wind blows. You constantly. said we're in near Helgen, or you are. From? Uh, yeah, you're, you're actually in Riverwood right now, so you're technically in the. Um, uh, oh gosh, I wish I could remember the. Is it the Yaldum or the. Uh, that's Winterhold. The Hold, that's what it is. Yeah, it's in Winterhold. Yes. I just can't remember what um, the, the name of the political unit is right now. Uh, it has Ooh. been a long week. That time period, I don't remember. Oh, it is definitely in. That, that is part of uh, Whiterun at that time, for sure. Okay. It's just I can't remember the name of whether it's a, called a Yaldum or called a. Oh, it's a Hold. hold. It's a Hold. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so this is where you guys have been making your way along. Uh, Gadar, each of the squares, as a reminder, is one meter. And what I'd ask you guys to each do is give us... And is it awareness? Or is it... No, it's observe, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Just give us an observe check, please. So modifiers. Right. Okay. And that's against our perception. Correct. I fail. I fail as well. Okay. Then I don't feel <laughs> as bad. For you know what it is? The happen. wind. That's, uh, you know, I can't, he, I can't. Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you are, you, you should be at some point today running across. We're, we'll be picking up at, let's say, um, around uh, like 9, 30, 10 o'clock uh, on this day's travel. This is your third day uh, in third second day in the um in the wilds and you definitely know that this is troll country uh Godard, would you give us a survival check please yes. hopefully the snow has not got too deep into this one ears <laughs> yeah how's that compared to your perception uh, not good no. not good mm -hmm. could i spend a luck point of course yep absolutely let's try that again uh, see him. Nope. Okay. So that is unfortunately, um, Gadar, frustratingly, maybe because of the way the wind blows in this region, because, uh, you know, there are furrows where the wind kind of blows along, and you either have bare patches of stone or packed ice or packed ice and snow, or maybe it was a recent uh, snowfall or, you know, ice rain. Um, you're just not finding any tracks which is perhaps a more you know an even more disconcerting thing than uh finding tracks from some dangerous beast that combined with the lack of a keen eye what do you think is distracting Gadar and Nizran what weighs on your mind this one does not understand why we go looking for a lock without a key Mm. It is a puzzle this one cannot solve. Yes, and it is unfortunate that the timing is not great. I had checked the stars last night, and the portents were not good for today's excursion, but... You are telling this one to... now? 
<laughs> yes. I did not want the, our minds to be changed just by... The stars may be in the sky and we cannot control them, but we can control our own destinies in whatever way we must. We cannot just be slaves to the uh, to the, the alignment of, of faraway stars. Gadar gives him a side eye. Yeah. You know, the, the, this, oh. this one culture believes everything is ruled by the celestial bodies. Yeah. Uh, well. Birth, position, form, personality. Mm. I see. Huh. Perhaps you we can have a longer conversation uh, uh, about this, and I can tell you, um, I can tell you things that may change your mind about all of that. <laughs> it's at that point, Gadar maybe turns around and you realize you guys have not quite been paying attention, and you hear from the rock above you this. <laughs> That's probably it's not good. Oh, yeah. Oh, what does it have to be a bear? I, I was a... like, I literally in my mind went like, before this encounter even started, I was like, are we going to see an owl bear in this game? And that was <laughs> half right. <laughs> this funny is the, uh... <laughs> a huge uh, and battle scarred bear. And both of you are familiar with the bears of Skyrim. They are the kind of things you typically want to run from more so than you wish to face. So, but this thing so is so close. it's not like so the tutorial close. bear in Skyrim where it's weak and whatnot. This is the one later mm -hmm. on that'll... This is a very, very tough, very uh, weathered and uh, dangerous oh, no. looking bear. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, no. I think we will, uh, in fact, give him a little juice up here. Here we go, let's see. All right. Um, in fact, let's see. Why don't you each give us a willpower check at plus, uh, let's say plus 10. Okay, so. So you're just gonna roll in your willpower and then you'll add 10 to the result. The, I the, 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 the stats don't have a button. We have to do a D100. Oh, okay, oh yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, that's why. I... And add ten, which means I am going to fail. <laughs> What's this your one willpower? Thirty. Oh no, you're, you're not sorry. You're not adding it to the by plus ten. I mean to the stat. Oh, to the stat. Okay. Yep, well, yeah, either okay. way, I still rolled a ninety-two. So still rolled okay. ninety-two. So that's not that ain't good. <laughs> a little good. off. Okay. Okay. And so so back in one if it's less than forty, I will succeed. Okay. <laughs> There oh my go. god. Nice. <laughs> so then, uh, Nizran, do you want to spend a luck point to reroll that? Or are we rolling for combat fear? Well, it would be am amusing to see the Red Guard shit his pants. <laughs> it is hard to run in those. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'll wait for George to get back. Uh, what I will do is I'll get our initiative tracker ready here, and I think I'll zoom I know I say this a lot. I love Khajiits. <laughs> That's great. That is awesome. I think Dave wants to play a Khajiit too when he plays, because he mentioned that on uh, Wednesday. This one does have a big family. <laughs> nice. When our, um, the uh, one shot we're running, not this weekend, next weekend, uh, is actually going to be set in, um, uh, dag uh, in uh, Daggerfall. Uh, nice. So it's not going to be um, we're going to have a whole new character, set of characters uh, for that, including I'm going to make a Khajiit for it. So, uh, George, uh, do you want to spend a luck point to re-roll that, or do you want to take the uh, failed roll? I think I'm going to take the failed roll. Okay. Give us a percentile oh, yes. roll, please. Mm, roll high. Like, really high. 26. No. You were startled by the source of panic. Uh, you jump in your boots and pause for a brief moment as you struggle to reassess the situation. You may not take any reactions until the beginning of your next turn. So, hey. let me add uh, your tokens into the initiative order here, guys. So this thing has chosen to do a threat display before it uh, attacks. You're gonna roll 1d6 and add your initiative bonus. Uh, I got a, only a nine. I'm very This strong. one respects the threat display and will take it under careful advisement. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
and this run. You know, 1d6 plus 11, I think, for you. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, whoops. Well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, at least you're acting before. Yeah. No. Okay. Actually, I already have. If you could enter your result in your initiative, in your turn order, too. Yeah. Because it doesn't auto populate. Perfect. Oh, and then you got to hit enter as well, too. There's that roll uh, 20 stuff. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I did it or it showed up on mine. Okay. Oh, yours is in now. No, no, it's in now. Just uh -oh. it, it's that's something that's come up in our last couple of sessions where uh, because we're entering, everyone's entering manually. Yep. Um, okay. So guitar, you are up first. You have three actions. Put your three tokens in front of yourself. Got them. What are you doing? Um. Uh, this one would like to run. Okay. <laughs> well, move 13. Uh, run quickly, my friend. And I think the, the first move is doesn't cost uh, AP. That's correct. Um, I would like to get out my bow. And I think that takes two one actions. One action, yeah. Or the two or one? One. Okay. One. One's already a weapon. It's a secondary and... action. Oh yeah, potions take two to drink. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to dash a little bit further. So a second one. Okay. There's four. Uh, and then nine here. Okay. And I'll hold my last one for in case I need it. Okay. Nice run. Okay, so I um see my companion take off running yep. uh, we're on the back of his neck sticking out past his hide fur <laughs> so i yell uh, uh hold on my friend and i will uh start by doing my movements so I'm, I'm right there. well i guess i can just move him this one does not slow down <laughs> not too good enough so i'm having i've been dealing with the sound issue that's why i'm oh okay Keep that same issue, right? Eh? Yeah, same exact thing. Weird. Okay, so you got a speed of 11. You move 11 squares. Yeah. Nine, two more. 10, 11. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's my first move. So it doesn't count as an action. You can always move your speed uh, without spending an AP. Yeah. Um, so uh, I see that my... Can I see... Uh, Goddard's tracks. <laughs> I don't even know if I can see him. Uh, you can probably see him. Like, this is all kind of happening fairly simultaneously, so you can okay. see him making a run for it. Okay, and he seems to be faster than me, so um, I think because I can't take reactions anyway, I need to get the hell out of here because I can't, I can't, I can't, if this thing attacks me, like, there's nothing I can do, right? Like, because I have no, yeah. So that's not good news. So I'm going to spend one AP. So can I spend two? Yeah, I already used, I use no AP. Can I spend two or three yeah. AP? So uh, when it comes to your turn, what you have to do is either spend at least one AP to, to take an action, uh, or you can set a contingent defensive action, like or sorry, contingent action, if X, then Y, but once everyone else has had their pass and passed, if you didn't take that action, you lose it. Uh, or you can set one aside as a defensive action and automatically spend that. So you spend one and does not do anything with it. You spend one to bank for a defense, but you, as you said, you can't do reactions. Or you can spend one as a contingent action. Um, I think I just need to get get moving. So essentially, I would like to get past Gadar. So that's my plan. Um, yeah. So I wind up for two AP. I'm going to get twenty. Well, you got to take them one at a time. Because remember, dashing oh, okay. is a secondary action, which means right, that's right. the bear can do it on your turn too. Right, right. Um, so I've spent no AP so far. Can I? Yep. Um, so I have to wait till it's not my turn to do a secondary. Is no, no, because right? you haven't done. A, you haven't spent an AP. You get to take an action first. So spend one AP to take an action. And can that action be secondary? A secondary action? Like it a can be a primary, secondary, or re okay. uh, on so your turn, primary or secondary okay. actions can be taken. Special actions are one of the two. Okay. Only two of your actions can be attacks in a round. Is the only real restriction. Okay, so I will then take a dash action right now. Okay. As one AP. Um, so go ahead and move yourself 11. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. Uh, I am yeah. spending 
Okay. One AP. So okay. the bear, one, two, is clamoring down. Three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Comes lumbering down. I've spent one AP. This run. Okay. If you'd like to spend an AP. Yeah, I'd like to <laughs> dash again. Go ahead. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I get up to there. Okay. I'm spending another AP. Two. There. Three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. And this thing is loping along. Uh, and is run? Yeah. It's still your uh, turn. Yeah, and I can't you save any for re reactions, and I don't really want to do a contingency. Uh, so I just want to b basically position myself. If you wish um, to draw, like, for instance, draw your rapier, that would be 1 AP. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what I will do. I will draw my rapier. Shing. Okay. Then are, um, you, are you done your turn? Yes. Okay, that's so awesome. then it is the bear's turn. I have some I spoke up faster. to do here. <laughs> so let me just check his reach. Okay. Gadar, you were uh, bow out, right? Yes. Okay. So this thing moves in, and it is going to... Yeah, that's just its uh, part of its movement for the round. And it is going to try and bash you with its claws. Would you like to defend? I would like to evade with my point. Okay, so you have uh, one AP. All right. Yep. So go ahead. This is a contested roll. You need to beat the bear's roll. Um, I got... Actually, I failed. So so long as oh. you succeed, you're good. That is exactly my agility. All right. Uh, so you were out of the way. Um, I am going to spend one of the bear's uh, stamina points because it has a fair chunk to take one more, and Gadar, I'm going to attack you again. Uh, do you have any AP left? I don't, but I do have stamina. Do you want to spend a stamina point? I would like to spend a stamina point. Okay, and what would you like to do? Um, evade. Now, hold on. Uh, technically, wait one second here. Can I only evade once per round? No, no, you can evade as many times as you like. Um, and you're, you don't take us up. Yeah, as long as you have the AP for it, you're you're good to go. I, I was just checking one thing. Technically, you did get an advantage because uh, I okay. failed and you succeeded. So I want to see if there is a yeah advantages. There's something you can do. There's very few things you can do with. Uh, you can't do damage to them with an evade, but oh, I, it's on it's on a normal attack is when I can get the bandage. Defender of one, uh, you may move one meter in any direction for free. Oh, without provoking? Without provoking. Well, no, you can move one for free. I can still spend an AP to get an attack of opportunity. Uh, I just, nah, we're good. Okay. So do you want to spend that stamina point? <laughs> I do. Okay. I would like to try to evade again. So then, I Jesus, ninety-five again. I I missed. So go ahead. Oof. Success. Definitely made that. So then, would you like to move one? Yeah. What? He's already spent a stamina. Yes. He's already spent a stamina, which means I'm out of APK. So you move one. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately. I can move one more up because I still have not used all my movement. And in fact, I'm going to position myself right here. So I have both of you in range. Oh, no. Does anyone have any... Nisran, you could spend an AP to get a... Sta or spend a stamina point to get an AP if you want to take an action this round. Um... Will that, am I allowed to take an action? Uh, like, is it considered a reaction if I'm taking it on somebody else's turn? No. Or I'm in a, like, okay. No, okay, so the way it works is that, like, once you pass your turn, then it goes to the next person. The secondary actions might inter, you know, be able to interrelate during that turn as well. But then it goes back to the top of the initiative order. And if anyone has any leftover AP, they can do it. Like, you only need to spend one per round. So, like, what Gadar could have done I is see. dashed over here and then passed and kept two AP in reserve. If I didn't attack him, it, when it came back to his turn, he could then spend another one to dash a little further and then pass. Mm -hmm. And reserve that yep. was like, you, you don't, you can choose to okay. sort of choose when you're spending your AP. 
Okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I don't want to. I, I had spent my three AP, so I don't want to spend a stamina. Uh, expend a stamina to get another AP. Okay. No. Then we are at the end of the round, guys. Uh, we are on to round two. Refresh your uh, action points. And Gadar, you're up first. What would you like to do? Okay. I really. Um. Which way should I run? Um. I'm definitely going to. I'm, I'm going to use the disengage for one AP action. Okay. And that just means that I can move without taking attack opportunity. Or okay. Correct. So I'm going to try to get to some high ground. Yeah. If they move, so it doesn't disengage. Just FYI, doesn't grant you any uh, movement. It just allows yeah. you to move without taking it. So. Okay. There's twelve and thirteen. Okay. Um, I'm going to. Let's, I'm going to try to do a precise strike. Okay. Uh, choose a hit location of the attack, and I get a minus twenty to my attack. I want to try to like hamper this thing's movement by hitting at the leg or something. Okay, that's not really a thing in the game, though. Just FYI, uh, you well, can, you can target. Like that. But what it'll do is that if you do hit, it'll target that location. So if there is a wound, it'll hit that location. But minus okay. twenty to hit. Okay, I'm not defending, so go right ahead. Okay. Oh, and I'm going to so use hold on, the, the range. Um... So the uh, just as a reminder, ranges for range weapons mm -hmm. uh, are either uh, where is it here? You're I either in, uh, there is close, mm -hmm. uh, effective, and long range. Yes, I'm in close range. Close range, okay. Uh, plus 10 at close range. So I have minus 10 total. Okay. Correct. So go ahead. And just to double check, I got to pick my arrow. I think I'm you, go... don't you have a talent that uh, reduces the reload speed by one? But yes, you yeah, do I gotta, need to. I'm going to use a broadhead arrow, the one to the slashing damage. Okay, go right ahead. Good choice and against an unarmored target. Broadhead, okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, go ahead and roll oh. a second time to think. Yes. I think your arrows I are superior, have... aren't they? They are indeed. Okay, so the six is my damage. But then I get plus uh, three the, from my arrow? The, 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 no, the bow is superior. The uh, arrows are not. Okay. So roll twice. Yeah. Select either. Okay, so six damage. Uh, and then and what's then your strength bonus? It's a four, isn't it? It's three. a three. Okay. And I have a. The arrow I use is a plus three damage to unarmored locations? Uh, that That's already. That's just your strength bonus. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that... Yeah. Okay. Um, so Got then. What you also uh, get is, so because you got advantage on this attack, uh, I'm going to assume you're going to add half your uh, luck bonus. Yes. Because you don't and need to two. hit an unarmored location and you don't need to, you know, inflict a bleed, a bleed one on this. Yes. All right. So then you hit, shwook, and this grazes up against this thing's massive paw. That was uh, nine points of damage. So there you go. Okay, and I've got one point I'm keeping in reserve. Okay. Uh, Nizran, your turn. What are you doing? Um, you got I a bear in your wanna... grill. Yeah, I know. I think what I... Well, I guess a quick rules question is um, if you are doing... Uh, casting a spell when you are engaged with uh, an enemy, is there some kind of version of attack opportunity? There's an attack opportunity, but it needs to have action points in order to trigger it or needs to have access to stamina points uh, in order to spend it. it to get it. And I'm just going to check the phrasing on yes. uh, stamina points, but I think it's only one per round. Oh, I think I did. Read so his that. turns got to come back up again yeah. before cannot he can use do them? one uh, effect per round, but that's not turn, which means we are round two, which means I could spend a stamina point to take an attack of opportunity. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, and the other question I have is, if I wanted to like grab some, look to see if I can find some like pebbles or something in the ground with the intention of throwing it into the eyes to blind the bear. Uh, um, you can assume by taking the blind action, we can assume that that's part of the narrative effect of it. You don't need to actually like take an okay. action to do that. If what you want to try and do okay. is blind it, 
Yeah, I thought that'd be uh, it's helping me in two different ways. <laughs> sure. Um, now, do you have unarmed listed as one of your combat style uh, options? That is a great question. Comments on the little second page here, of the PDF right? or the character yeah, sheet? Yeah, on the bottom of the notes. Um, the bottom of the notes. Dagger, um, rapier, saber, scimitar, and? And unarmed. Uh, unarmed. So yeah, you're good to go. That means you can okay. roll that as a contest against the, here, the bearer. I think it's as combat style though, so let me double check here. Um, yeah, blind, here we go. Combat style, I can use either evade or combat style. I'll use combat style. So go ahead and make your, uh, pick one, any of your weapons will do. I mean, okay, that's the ones that you've got right. listed as apply yeah. combat yeah. style. I got a four as my degree of success. Okay. Okay. Uh, twenty-four and. Okay, so you got a. Uh, I think twenty-four is better. Than, is uh, less than your uh, agility, but if you hover yeah. over it, you'll see you got a three. So you're. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, it was subtracting. Right. So I rolled a four. You got a three. You would need to spend two luck in order to increase that to actually succeed. Because that would increase the difficulty. Um, you could also try and roll again, but you'd want to roll a five or higher. Ties always go to the defenders. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll, I'll, you know, I'll make it happen by spending uh, two of my luck. How, how, I forget the uh, way, how often you re regain luck. Luck start of each session. Okay, got it. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Here's go there goes two All luck. right, so it is blind for one round. Cool. Hopefully it doesn't have a scent ability. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't had to fight a bear before. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, is you, yeah, toss something into its eyes and it roars uh, as it uh, rears back and, and bats at its eyes. You have, uh, would you like to spend another action point or are you passing to the yes. bear's turn? I'm going to do an action point to now. Um, I, so that's not considered actually an attack that no, the, uh, that's one of the okay. ways the uh, special actions differ Secondary. from the okay. attacks is that they're resisted, okay. but it doesn't take anybody actions to resist them. Yeah, that's pretty great. Mm -hmm. it's um, pretty cool. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm going to then attack it with my, uh, I'm going to slash down at it with my scimitar at the beast. Right I mean, sorry, I'm going to uh, rapier. Yep. Um, this one thinks you are a great fool. You are it. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, it is blind right now. Um... Which means I don't think I can evade. That says mm -hmm. minus 30 to test that benefit from sight. Autofail yeah. tests rely solely on sight. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, give us your, oh yeah, your rapier attack right there, 18. Yeah. That is a hit. Go ahead and roll yeah. a damage. Or so a second time, because this is a superior one. So you get to roll damage twice and take the better. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, so I basically just rolled the whole thing again. It'll yeah, just click on the damage. exact same yeah. thing. We'll just look at the damage. Okay, another five. Okay, five. And it is slashing because it is... So it's no, an extra... I, I, well, it's a rapier actually. So I don't know if that's uh... I, so slashing. Uh, it's slashing, cutting, or bludgeoning are the three types of damage. Oh, yeah, gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. It's yeah. more of a makes sense. you know a game mechanic name the, more so than a specific type of damage. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, okay, go ahead, John. You had a question? Oh yeah, I was like crushing damage is pretty cool because they can like start degrading their armor if you hit right. Yeah, so. it's pretty neat. Um, okay, so that is. Um, eight points of damage. So that is there. Um, okay. uh, oh, I see. Okay, so I have one AP left. Yeah. And your movement. Um, I'm going to save it for a react, like if I need to try to okay. block or something. So one of the things yeah. is you don't actually need to, there is a difference between readying it, like to bank it for whatever. That's really only when you don't do anything else in your turn. You want to wait and see what your enemies do. And okay. just saying, I'm done, you know, I'm done my path, okay. my turn. Uh, and then it'll cool. go back to you once the uh, bear has its actions. Okay, cool. All right. Um, would you kindly give us this bear is going to spend its first AP to try and resist. It's going to try and clear its eyes. So would you give us another combat style roll? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I only got a two this time. You got a fail. Yeah. 
Uh, you want to spend luck to re-roll? I don't think it's a good idea this early in the fight to do so that. You, you toss, you know, like some dust or something in its eyes. You whack this thing, and then you're like, oh, no. Uh, and this, yeah. I think it sees me. This baleful, hate-filled <laughs> eye sees you, Nisran, and, and it <laughs> tries to bash you with its uh, massive claw. I'm, ba I'm, I'm afraid we're about to see a scene from The Revenant. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to defend? You have to decide before I make my attack. Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to defend. I'll tell you what t what way yeah. I'm defending. Yeah, okay. because that tells so us whether I'm it is uh, a c contested or whether it is uh, just a success. Uh, so it's coming down at me with a paw, basically. It's yeah. trying to, like, or is it by... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that you're I, not restricted in... You can evade, you can parry, you can block, you can counterattack. Whatever, whichever one you choose, um, you just... We, we figure out in the, in the fiction how that kind of makes sense. Okay. Uh, I, I, since I have my rapier out, I'll go for um, a parry. Parry? You got it. Um, you've only attacked once right now. A counterattack is a contested roll. Whoever wins hits the other one. It counts towards the total number of attacks, but if you wanted to try and damage this thing further, that yeah. might be one way to do that. And you yeah. get plus one to your success level with counterattacks as well as parries when you're using your rapier. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I spent my last AP to do that. Okay. So I got a, oh, I failed so closely. Mm -hmm. I have to succeed now. Okay. <laughs> How does 53 <laughs> compare to your agility? Uh, it is uh, above my agility, uh, which is a 41. Um, you want to lock now, that? I think I do. Um, so I only get a plus one to my success level if I am already have a success, have level, a success level to begin level, with. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, same yeah, same so applies I'm... for spending luck as well. You can only spend luck okay. if you actually succeed. Okay. So here we go. I'm spent one more luck to Come roll on, that. Big money. Here it goes. Let's go. That, that is a is, hit, I think. Is under my, yeah, yeah. And Four, that is the six, maximum six. damage. And because yes. it is, uh, so one of, the, we've got the advantages that you gain when you succeed and the contested roll fails. Um, mm -hmm. In this case, because what, what we have been saying is that, uh, like, unless you're, there's a reason to try and degrade the armor so you can get access to the cutting damage bonus or slashing damage bonus. Um, then we're always going to assume that you're doing the fortunate hit, adding half your luck. So it'll be plus two damage. Oh, mm -hmm. So okay, that's yeah, going to be seven is your most. We don't need to roll superior. That is 13, 14 points of damage. Whoa. Look at this. It is the adrenaline. <laughs> badly hurt. Unfortunately, not to its wound threshold yet, but this mm -hmm. thing was quite badly hurt. It is not happy. Yeah. So it yeah. tries to get in on you. You get a lucky uh, stab in. Well, skillful. I shouldn't undercut your successes here. Uh, it's a combination. Uh, then um, I have one more left, and I could attack one more time. So I am going to try and attack one more time with a paw. Would you like to spend a stamina point? That would be the yellow dot that you had on your token. Have you spent any stamina so far? I don't think so, right? <laughs> No. Nope. Okay, so you actually should have four stamina points left. Uh, yeah. I'm, I think it just the adrenaline's kicking, kicking in, and okay. so, yes, I will put that down. So you have attacked three. twice this there round, which means you can't counterattack again, but you could parry or you could ward and, and block with that uh, spell. I'm, I'm gonna, I think because sword is in hand and it's like in this moment, I'm gonna, I'll just keep going with the parry. You got it. Uh, I got a three. I succeeded on a three. Okay. Nope. Uh, and I only have one luck left, so I'm just gonna take the hit. Uh, yeah, for yeah. All just, right. You know. uh, what is your damage reduction? My damage reduction is. It'll be listed on your uh, your armor, sir. I, I didn't put it on the main. Your AR um, is one with your one, partial yes. moonstone reinforced right. robes. It's not. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, well, why would you expect a wizard to be wearing plate mail, right? Yeah. Well, also, it's got a, it's got AR against magic too. So, yeah. okay, you know. that's that's like that's not the take the hit armor rating you want. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, okay, so you take um, six points of damage. Okay. Um, 
so you'll reduce that by one, you take five, but you're also oh, gonna right, take right. five bleeding damage at the start of your next turn. Oops. The way bleeding works um. is you take the damage uh, once from the bleed and then the bleed goes away. So that one, is two, it's damage one time. Okay. third action. You'll take five bleed at the start of your next turn. Mm, and nice. um, I just yell, don't let it hit you. You know, you mentioned the Revenant. I think I'm going to spend my stamina point. <laughs> oh, no. This one was aware of that. <laughs> it is going to try and trip you. Okay, crazy uh, red guard bastard. So this is, fortunately, you don't have to spend a point to resist it. You can resist with your... Athletics, your combat style, or your evade skill, whichever you prefer. Uh, um, I succeeded on a zero, so really, as long as you've got any degrees of success on this, you'll right, avoid I'll, this. Yeah, I'll go with. Uh, Make an attack. We're oh, hold on, I'm an idiot. Oh, I got a critical hit. I oh. rolled a zero one, so yeah, I got a crit. Right, so well. unless you get a crit. I did not, so it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter. So it knocks your yeah. legs out from under you, and you are prone. Okay. Now here's the upside. Mm -hmm. You can stand for free in this game. The downside is they get a free attack of opportunity on you if you do that. Th and that's why there do. is an action called arise, but arise is a secondary action, so you can't oh, do that on someone else's turn. Oh, I see. All right, I'm done with my oh, actions. Yeah. Gadar, you got any action points left? Hmm. Yes, I do. Would you like to take an action? I would like to shoot that bear. Please do. And I'm going to use a uh, broadhead again. Okay. Leave my friend alone, you big furry bastard. Oof. Uh, that is way up there. You want to lock that? It's a 90. Uh, it's not a crit fail, is it? 95 on the no, roll. No, you got a four lock, so... Okay. 96 or uh, higher is when I'll you're spend in trouble. Point, yeah. Okay, go ahead and make your second uh, roll or make your roll again. Oh, oh. Even... he's really concerned about you, Nisran. Um, yep. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Nisran, <laughs> do you have any uh, action points left? Uh, I had none, no. Okay, and the bear is out. Gadar, are you out? I'm out. Start the next round. Okay. Refresh your action points, please. Uh, well, on your turn, first guitar, you get three action points right. back. What do you want to do? Um, uh, double checking. Well, my friend's in the dirt. Uh, this one drops his bow and readies his spear with an action. Okay. And then he is going to move in into threatening range. Okay. And he is going to jab just it. finish off his run. I'm one of you, Bear. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would never do that. Um, spear. Yep. Go right ahead. Oh. Yeah. He's, you want to lock that? Geez. Yeah, I'll spend my last luck point. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to need it, right? <sighs> you shall see. No. So that's your that's first attack. Uh, you you want to take another action? I do, yes. I'm going to cast a spell. Oh, yeah? What are you thinking? I'm going to heal ally. Mmm. Okay. Mm, cool. Um, I, 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 I don't got my PDF, so if you could look that one up. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, so you're going to have to unready your spear in order to do that, because that requires two hands. Oh, actually, hold on. No, no, no. You're going to have to drop your spear to do that. Cast a spell. I have to have my hands free? You have to have your hands absolutely free. Yeah. There are tech that... ways that you can, uh, like, uh, you can have a, unless your spear has the, um, what is it? I can use it one or two-handed. No, no, but that's not that's not the, the critical thing. You need to have a, a weapon that is a focus. Oh. Yeah. Your character would have known that, though, right? Like, you, you don't, I'm not going to, you can make a decision of what you want to do, do differently, but if your hands aren't free... I think it's like a minus 40. Let me double Jeez. check here. Um, There's no way I can succeed doing that then. Why do you always roll crit? <laughs> it's not a D100, yeah, okay. Um, hold on, let me t the, I make sure that I got... Yeah, I know it's either minus 10 or minus 20. Minus 20 if you don't have two free hands. Yeah, I can't do that. Well, maybe I'll just try to get its attention. So I've attacked once. Yeah, um, you have two more actions. Do you want to try and attack again? 
Yes. Because the spear is dog again. shit for counterattacks, right? Yes, it's a minus 20. Yeah. Alrighty, let's try again. Two-handed. Stab, stab. Go ahead. Come. Hey, that one will do it. There you go. Okay. Uh, and second one for damage. For superior. Okay, so six. Uh, so it's... Um, your strength bonus is a four or three? Three, right? Um, we went through this before. It's a three, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that is nine points of damage. Nice. And uh, well, and you've got uh, two extra from your luck. So there you go. So you stab this thing. It roars once again. Uh, it is gonna, not pleased with you. I'm going to hold on to my last action point. You got it. And it's run. You got three action okay. points. I would like to use my first one. Um, or, um, yes, I would like to use my first one to arise. Okay. So you carefully stumble to your feet. You have two more action points. Okay, so uh, now that I'm back on my feet, uh, did I did I retain my grip on my on my rapier yes. when I? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, good. So then um, I kind of get back up in, in my space. I'm still engaged with this yep. massive beast, and now I've like felt like <laughs> what it's like to get hit by this thing, Ooh, and like I don't want that to happen again. Hold yeah. up, I think uh, I might have. That's your... never good. Oh no, that's two. You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm back on my feet. I'm just going to uh, try to stab it with my rapier. Go right ahead. For my second action point. I'm, I'm out of action right point, so I cannot defend. Okay. Oof, it's a hit. Okay. Is that That's a critical one. Then, would you roll? That is a one. That is a critical hit, which means we get to roll. So we look at the tens, okay. you know, the ones digit. It's a zero for hit location. You hit this thing in the head. Yes. Go ahead and roll damage a second time for the superior yep. strike. Does it want to be blinded with snow? Six. Blinded with an eye. Ten. Because uh, if you get two, you actually like remove a, uh, a, a limb. All right, so that is mm. nine, uh, ten, eleven. Yeah. Here we go. Hack this thing in the head. Let me make a stun check for it. Good or job, shock George. check for it. I succeeded. Um, which means I don't lose action points. However... Um, Uh, we do look at the actual wound. Hold on. Um, so we did the body. Sorry, I screwed this up last time, so I was going to check again. Mm -hmm. Minus 20 to all tests until the wound is fully healed. Ooh. So wow. you hack this thing right across its head, bleeding down so you, where you couldn't get the... Uh, uh, the uh, dirt or whatever you threw in his eyes to, to blind it. You have given it kind of a, you know, boxer's cut above the eye. Mm -hmm. This is... Um, All right, so I, I I have one AP left, but I'm going to save. I'm, I'm done. I'm done for my kay. turn at the moment. This thing I'm gets like, its oh. AP back. All right. Um, then... Ooh. I'm going to make a fear check for it, but it is stubborn, which means it rolls its fear checks twice. Oh, so willpower man. at uh, plus one. It's That's a great that trait. Huge, <laughs> it's got that huge debuff, though, so yeah. Oh, no, it passes. So. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Run while you can, Bear. This one does not want to fight you. <laughs> this. Oh, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. I think it is going to disengage for its first action and then go mm -hmm. lumbering off here. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Um, anyone want to take any secondary actions? I, I say to, um, I just turn you know over to Gadar and I got blood dripping off my rapier and myself. I'm like, I think I can kill it. And I turn around to start like I'm going to run away, af run after it. I, I would like to dash as a uh, secondary action. Okay. And he, he's just going to dash right here. Uh, just put himself between him and his run and the bear goes, um, you have chosen wisely, brother bear. <laughs> okay. Uh, so good and then I spend my last AP to run up to him. I'm like, yeah, stop. I, no, I can get, I can, I can kill it. I'm pretty. I'm sure of it. I will tell you, if you did kill it, there are things like a bear's pelt worth a hundred drakes that you could uh, take from it. 
There is meat that could be taken from it, and there are alchemical uses for alteration spells uh, with his claws. This so one see? left his bow back there. I can't. I, yeah. No. So, all right. So the bear races <laughs> oh, off, man. and you guys are <laughs> left alone. But Niz, uh, Nizran is a little bit uh, beat up right now. So yes. Nizran, would you uh, care, sure. uh, uh, Gadar? Would you like to plant your spear in the ground? Yes. Let me bring you guys over here. To use my uh, uh, very weak magic. <laughs> I, I, look, I'll take it. I have okay. no points. I, I have to get a 30 uh, or lower to cast to, this. To do it, okay. Well. Nope. Okay. No, oh, okay. No. We have to keep nope. an eye out for critical fails is hey, the thing. There we go. Oh, right. Okay. Would you look up, uh, then, oh. uh, what is it, touch? I think, well, you know, I've got it listed in your character, Healing character touch. sheet right here. Um, I think what, it's what two level? wounds I can heal. Uh, it's only level one. Okay, so healing touch on uh, level one. It's a restoration spell. Uh, so what that does, heal ally. Um, uh, level one costs you six magicka, magic. and it restores. Well, I think I'm doing specifically healing touch, and that's another spell. Oh, yeah, 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 fair enough. Uh, healing touch costs you uh, three ma magicka. Uh, so nothing. It's... Oh yeah, nothing because you're downcasting, right? Nice. So that's two. Two points you get back. Okay, I'll take it. That could make all the difference. Uh, no. Okay. Do we should try again there, okay, Guitar? I do. Um, we will do that as I fetch my bow and arrow and make sure I didn't damage it. Okay. Okay. I'll be back in a while. I'll be back in a while. Try again. Sure. Come on. Oof. Nope, not a fumble. Nope. 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 Let's see that nope. 99. Three. Okay, there you another go. Two. Okay, that's another two points back for him. I feel like my luck is about to run out. Or this one's luck is soon to fail. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, <laughs> that is uh, Nisran healed. So I think what I'll do is, uh, unless there's anything else you guys wish to do outside... Let's make our way into the ruins themselves. And allow me to think, I don't George. know why, but I, I really like this game. <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, it's a really well, you know, it's a really, really well designed I think 90% game. 90% of it is I know so much about the lore and whatnot. It's a big part of the appeal. I think, like, the thing I think is interesting is that we've run it now for a bunch of different people, some of which are familiar with Elder Scrolls stuff, some of which have never, you know, they don't even know what the, the games are. They couldn't name one if they're... Uh, life depended on it um, and the game itself has still been good for everybody let me shift ping and bring it down here and while we're waiting for George uh, George has spent do you know if he spent any of his stamina points he spent one point one point okay so three left defending against the bear and it didn't work how many did you spend any yet I spent one. One. Okay, so you're down to two. Okay, perfect. So we got you guys in your location. Now, the question then is, uh, Nizran, um, I don't think you have a light spell, do you? Um, that is a great question. Um, no. No, okay. Which means not. you will have to be carrying a torch down here. So let yeah. me give... Uh, I think you've got... This is why Khajiits make the best dungeon devilers. This yeah. one sees in the dark. Okay, ah. here we go. AKA, I have dark vision. Excellent. Yeah, so Nizran, you can see where you can see right now. All right. So you guys find... Oh, let me turn the... We don't need this wind on anymore. That wind is really loud. I should have adjusted it. Apologies for those at home. If it was really, really loud. Um, so we're playing on the mountaintop. So <laughs> you guys find as the your patron uh, described, you found this entrance, um, a hole in a very specific uh, collection of uh, stones that is in view of two different peaks. 
almost as if it was a place that uh, some wanted to make sure that they were able to find again at some point. And when you step down into the depths here, Ms. Ron, would you kindly give us a lore check? And we'll give you a plus 20 on this. So just subtract 20 from whatever you roll. Okay. Okay, it's a good roll. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, enter the negatives. Uh, yeah. A little way. Is that a crit? crit? Hold on. It's a uh, five. Roll to five. 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 What's your luck bonus? Luck bonus is a four, though, I think. Four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the as you're making your way down you can picture the musty stink of going down into here you can imagine the cold you know uh that has uh, managed to or the snow that has managed to accumulate on the initial landing there but you can tell this ron just from the way the wind flows down into here that this place must be extensive and there must be a great deal of distance to here. And what you find as you step a few feet or meters uh, forward into the actual area, there is crude graffiti on the inside of the wall here that seems to have been left in <laughs> Uh, the language of the ancient, or the runic language of the ancient Nords. Not the kind of thing that would be carefully carved in there by, you know, um, an artisan. The kind of thing that might give, like, directions to a more menial worker. Being the cautious dungeon delvers that you are, am I correct in thinking that you would train your ears to see if there is anything you can hear down here? That sounds like a good idea to me. Yes. Would you each give us an observe check, please? Okay. Oh, this one please to the <laughs> lever star. I think I'm so messed up from that fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, that is one less than my perception. Not a, not nice. a critical failure. Uh, Gadar, you can hear the distinctive squeak of skeevers deeper in here and for those who may not be familiar with it like i don't think i sprung these on you last time george but you did first time i played you did first time but i think i was before george george was at a event yeah. or something before as you missed the first half yeah yeah picture something that is a bit of a Great cross job. between like a feral um a medium-sized dog and a sewer rat, and you'll get somewhere close to the disease-ridden creature that is a skeever. He's on. Oh, man. This one here is dungeon rats. Yeah. Dungeon rats? Yes. I don't mind rats. They're the size of dogs. Yeah, you're the a size sailor. of dogs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And if they, if they bite you, uh, your manhood may fall off. Well, then we must get out of here immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Why don't you guys move uh, half of your speed? Okay. I'm going to kind of get I'm going to follow your lead here because I feel like assuming you are... we're stealthing is why we're going half speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I will cut it just short of half because I know he's slower than me. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. And that takes me right to there. Okay. Hmm. Which way should we go? The squeaking definitely came from that direction, and it echoed along as if there are many corridors in this complex. Hmm. This one knows where the danger is. Maybe we should go where the danger is not, and then seek out danger. Yes, this sounds good to me. Uh, can you tell how far away these things are? I, I don't. I still don't hear these. Rats, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. Can you tell how far they may be from us with your keen ears? This this one is uh, um, humbled in your your belief of my of this one's hearing ability, but no, they are far though. Very good. Yes. Let us let us <laughs> go in a different direction. Move again. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna move four meters this way. 
peek around the corner. Okay. I'll go right behind you. Okay. What you can see is a series of well picked over corpses, or at least the skeletal remains of them. Um, you need not make a roll to know that the juiciness and the scraps of flesh that hang to the scattered bones suggest that this is something present only recently. It is not a legacy of whoever built this complex. And when you say picked over, you mean like teeth picked over? You'd have to get a little closer in order to see. I'm sure this nothing one will is, happen. This one is brave. He will, he will move closer. Okay. Would you give us a survival check, Guitar? Woohoo! Nice. Yeah, there is something that has been chomping and stripping these things. Uh, something that seems strong enough. Um, there are broken bones in here, that, like femurs, that have been shattered and not bit through, like shattered. Either smashed or torn apart in a pair of massive paws or hands, or smashed up against a rock. In either case, no small feat of strength in order to get access to that juicy marrow that's in there. And the gnaw marks on the outsides suggest something with terrible teeth. He's on. These keepers did not do this. It is something big with hands. You can see there are scraps of clothing in here as well. Hmm. What... Uh, uh, so, uh, do those clothes, do you think any of them go with those bones? Most likely. He's done. You would not be mortified if I picked through the bodies for anything of value, would you? No, I am a, I am a mage. I have done <laughs> much, much stranger things. The, the, the Nords have <laughs> funny ideas about picking over the bodies. Mm -hmm. Well, something must be done. It's not necromancy. Nobody's doing necromancy here. Just <laughs> good art spits. <laughs> so then, right, which... I'll kind of, I'll kind of like guard the, you know, I'll look the opposite direction, and, you know, I'll scan around while he's doing that. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give us a percentile roll there, guitar. I'm imagining if there, what I think was stomping through here would have broke a lot of use. Ooh, a 100. Ooh. Ooh. Would you give us two. He <laughs> made Kevin's day. 2D100, please. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, 71. Mm. I'm guessing the 100 was rolled twice. <laughs> and correct. I love those charts. I have a ton of charts I use in my games. Yeah. Um, well, we've got, we haven't used them in quite a while. Like since we uh, switched over from AD and D two E in Night Below, I just don't get a chance to get make use of random loot tables. Um, okay, so what you find hidden among here? There is. Uh, it looks like it may have been set in some piece of. Uh, jewelry or perhaps a, a weapon or a tool of some kind but there is a really good sized diamond that you find within the grisly remains of here and this has got to be worth between like 200 and 500 drakes Ooh. yeah wow. nice find and uh, what you find is, yes, yes, yes. Uh, would you give us a, uh, actually, I think what you find is a steel dagger Ooh. among them as well.
steel means plus one damage. So the typically the material used to make yeah. weapons in, in uh, Tamriel is iron, uh, but there's a whole host of other more exotic materials that are used. Is it going to be like a, a D4 plus one damage? It would be a dagger. Does D4 plus one damage? Yeah. And uh, its value is like twice what uh, a regular. Bidar looks over at Nisan and says, Nisan, I found oh. a shiny diamond. Okay. Mm -hmm. The merchants do not like this one. You must sell it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Sure. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> okay. Now, Gadar, your carry rating is an 18. Your current encumbrance is an 18. This yes. dagger has an encumbrance of one. Would you like a backup weapon, Nisran? Uh, let me check my own inventory here. Um, see so, how so you open up that, I am. Yeah, you open up that menu. <laughs> uh, your, your carry rating is a 20. Well, I said I can't move. <laughs> and you're, yeah. Uh, 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 like uh, the thing is, the encumbrance rating, rules yeah. in this are actually pretty fucking cool. Uh, so it'll affect uh, some agility skills, but not combat. So you're still able to fight effectively, oh, just like, like you're going to be a lot less, and it does slow you down yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. so it looks like I have two left. I have a nine. Out no, of no, 11. you got a carry rating of twenty, and you've got nine. Oh, you have... oh, right, right. I have eleven left. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Ah. Uh, yes, I will take it, my friend. Okay. Yes. There's encumbrance one. So and uh, great and um. Is there any mark? Are there any markings or anything that make it, um, you know, unique in any way? Uh, or is it just. It does, yeah. Like, it, it, you can tell it is of Nord make because it's not unusual for Nords hmm. to uh, to add a lot of, like, filigree and whatnot onto their things. It's got a very. It's, it's you know, uh, stained with uh, some almost completely dried viscera. But uh, the even the, the scabbard itself or the little sheath that the dagger is in is a nicely crafted thing. It's got uh, depictions of like, a, you know, a crow or a raven. And there's a depiction of a wolf in it. The kind of things that you would see in, in Skyrim. It's not exceptional, but it is definitely something that was made by a skilled hand. And you can see there mm -hmm. is a tooling on it. So perhaps you... Um, if this was something that was made for a specific individual, the tooling on it would be able to help you. Uh, if the blacksmith still lives, that mm -hmm. maybe it'll track down who made this, which may give an indication of who these people were. Okay, I'll, I'll sort of like note that to myself and plan on doing that when I return to okay. some kind of civilization. Is, um, is there um, any sign of like old colors or potential clues about where these bodies came from? Not in what's left of them, no. They definitely have what you can put together from that. what's in here uh, is that uh, these are likely the remains of Nords. He's on. Interesting. Do mm -hmm. not tell them that we looted the bodies. Do not tell who? Whoever we find to return Dagger to. Ah, well, it'll be between you and I then. Okay. The torch sputtering. What would you guys like to do yeah. next? Do you still hear those sounds in the distance? Let's find out. Okay. There's a yeah. narrow corridor that extends to the north. Natural. Um, natural likely in origin, but you can tell that the... Sir, the um, floor of this cavern has either been tromped, you know, flat by people move, making their way back and forth, or there has been some tooling or perhaps a combination of the two. There are places where this has been extended out. There are chips on the wall where you can see things have uh, hard like metal tools, weapons, or otherwise that have hit up against the walls. Uh, where it's knocked things away, but it does appear as if it's been a while since anyone has gone down here, and there is a narrow opening right here. You see uh, Gadar pull out his bow, knock an arrow, not a lot of tension on the string, and he, like, stoops as low as he can and starts shuffling ahead okay. to start hunting some skivas. Um, I will follow in your footsteps. Um... 
and uh, make and if I hadn't had my my rapier out, I would draw it. Okay. So when you were to, because you'd have pause. <laughs> <laughs> so Nizran, if um, you, I think it depends on the Khajiit too, right? It does, yes. Yeah. Um, like there's some in Morrowind um, that couldn't wear foot items, yeah. uh, like the Argonians. Yeah. Um, so this uh, here, this straight line is actually a wall made of brick. And then you can see up ahead, Gadar, fallen bits of it as if the wall has partially collapsed and you can see up ahead tile work on the floor and more collapsed mm. brickwork. He's on. We are moving into a dungeon or a crypt. Mm. Your employer I seems see not to have been lying. Yes, mm. perhaps there is treasure, great treasure waiting ahead or great danger or both. What I was going to say to uh, Nizran too, you are mm -hmm. able to cast magic with that rapier in your hand without penalty, but if you do have the torch in your hand, whether it's in one or whether it's, you know, um, basically the, the rapier, because it has the focus quality, there is like magical material that's made into it that allows it to not interfere with your, you know, or to uh, supplement an, <clears throat> an empty hand for your uh, spell casting. But if you have a torch in your hand, you're gonna take a minus 20 to spell casting checks. Yeah, I think last time I played, I just wound up dropping the torch. Yep. Once we hit the combat. <laughs> that sounds, yep, familiar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All, right. Right. Okay. So, All right, then... so I got my torch in one hand and my, my, my I keep saying scimitar, uh, it's reminding me of Mallow playing Mallow. Yeah, um, <laughs> totally. Uh, so, but yeah, rapier in one hand, torch in the other, and I will follow uh, Gadar. You got it. Go ahead, Gadar. It's moving ahead slowly, very, very cautiously. Gonna stick his back to the wall and set set a chest. There is a chest there. He leans and looks further down the way. Looks clear. So I will then step up here and guard the way while you, with the torch, held out. Okay. Guitar. Yeah. What would you like to do? Slips his arrow in his quiver, sets his bow against the wall, and inspects the chest. Uh, Gadar, <laughs> are you trained in subterfuge? Subterfuge. I am untrained in subterfuge. Okay. So if there are any traps in here, it will be tricky, but not impossible for you. Mm -hmm. You want to give us a subterfuge check? Yes. Lords don't trap their chests. <laughs> no. You said this applies to minus 20 instead of minus 10. Yeah, like so, it it's just, so it's subtract 10 from whatever the actual result is for comparing. Oh, I fail so bad. That's actually a crit fail, I think. That's a 98, isn't it? Oh, it's an 88. No, it's an 88. Okay, thank God. Um, so you're looking at this thing. You think you might be able to, with some trial and error, figure out how to open this, maybe? Um, mm -hmm. But you don't even have lock picks, so... What that are you thinking? True. I'm thinking... Kadar moves, like, here, bends down, and tries to pick it up a little bit to see how much it weighs. Okay. This run... <laughs> It's a horrible yeah. idea, but I will point out that one of your alteration spells is yes. I I was waiting for him to tell me he was having trouble with the lock, but I have a, an okay. I was open. Yeah, so yeah. No, I'm I I, I figured I didn't know what was <laughs> Let happening. Let him try. So I was letting him like go for a little so bit, and then once I, him, and... yeah, once I see him start to actually try to pick it up, I'm like, oh, hold, hold on. <laughs> yes, he's up. What, what what seems to be the problem here? Well, it is locked. This one does not have tools to pick it. Ah, I do. Um, all right, so you, I'm... He's done. You, you, you are a... Mer, uh, what is it? Uh, a man? I forget. Yes, I, of yes, many I am talents. a man. Redguard. A man, a man of many, many talents. Yes. Uh, yes, that is true. Not as okay. many talents as you, my uh, red feline friend. One of my talents is many lives. Pass the torch. I will stand guard. Okay. Very good. So I will give him the torch so then I have a hand free. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm going to cast 
Uh, oh, yeah. I, I turn back to him. Yes. I don't know if it's uh, this one does not know if it's trapped. Um, be careful. Hmm. Uh, oh, actually, that's a good question. I don't know what the range is on it. Uh, let me go to open the... is one meter to one meter. Okay, yep. so I do have to be right there. You choose yeah, a so locked door sense. container within one meter. If the extended test threshold to unlock it is equal to the spell strength, which would be two for you uh, or lower then it instantly unlocks itself. Okay. That's so cool. Uh, that is cool. All right, so I'm going to cast that. And so there's no reason not to cast that without restraint. Uh, like. There is no reason, no, no reason to cast it with uh, without restraint. So you, okay. Yeah. So, so if you're doing a restraint, you I think it's zero. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. George, you're gonna go Alohomora. <laughs> <laughs> that is a success, isn't it? Against your willpower. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. What's it look um, like as you cast your open spell? Um. Uh, I think uh, I think it's not too flashy. Yeah, I think it's that. What kind of is it, whatever kind of lock is on there? Yep. The mechanisms just start turning of their own volition, yep. just gears and whatever, are turning, 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 and like, but turning in a way that looks like if you really stare at it close, it kind of becomes like a Escher painting somehow, like the gears start like looking like they're going in all directions and space is inverted or whatever. Okay. And then sh and then truly it steps back to normal, but it's open. All Unlocked. right. Uh, give us a 1d40, 4-0 roll, please. Okay, 1d40. 20. Uh, what you find inside uh, are Whatever else was once in this uh, chest has seemingly um, desiccated away to being nothing. But what you do find is two chipped and worn drakes. So two effectively gold coins. Mm -hmm. Everything else, unfortunately, in here has rotted away to a See, valueless Kadar, like, condition. Stand on the tip of his feet and look in and he's like, such a big chest for such little reward yeah there i mean there was yes. more in there you would have had to root it around just that whatever else of value was in there has um desiccated over time or deteriorated over time leaving nothing but ruin behind however nisron's voice carries down these corridors almost as much as what those fevers squeak is because yeah you have to speak in a confident uh, regular speaking voice in order to cast those spells. So, yeah, and he doesn't even think about. He just like just does it. Yeah, so interested to get in there. Blah, blah, and it kind of blah, 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 yeah, blah, 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 right. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> He's not used to being in, well, in dungeons, shit. particularly. Yeah. What would yeah, you like to do next? Exactly. Should we proceed. Kadar um, grabs his bow and just stows it, and then he pulls out his spear one-handed, and he'll hold on, hold on to the torch for Nisaran. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll grab it. I'll take the torch from you. He, he, no, I'll hold on the torch. Uh, oh, you, you want to hold hand free? It? Yeah. Okay. I use my spear one handed. And let okay. me do this here. Um, I think they changed the lighting options on the tokens, so they're a little more legible. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, is uh, normally. Yeah, that's interesting. So now, I mean, maybe it's been given this for a while and I just didn't notice it, but uh, it currently does, it'll give you five points of, if you put like five meters of bright light, five meters of low light, it'll show you there's 10 meters total of light. And I don't mm, remember doing good. that before. No, I don't, I, I can't remember last time. I, I, I've never seen it, the, the, any other version, but the original without the, add, without it added together. Yeah, you'd so, have to do this kind of clinging of, of things together, but that's, that's I like that. Uh, all right, so then, uh, yeah. can, is this light now coming from Gadar? Yes. Uh, yep. Okay. And he'll uh, step ahead, spear one-handed, and creep ahead, low to the ground. Okay. Do you guys it's... think that you would have spent uh, a... Uh, an hour resting before going in here. Hmm. 
Um, I sort of hand waved it and had you go in. The reason I asked, you would recover one stamina point, and although you guys didn't spend any Magicka at, in the last thing, you would have recovered your intelligence bonus in Magicka as well. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting a stamina back. Yeah, I mean, I feel like yeah, we would same. have, like, t once we found okay. it, we would have, like, spent yeah. some time there. So go ahead and bump your stamina up. So it'll be four and three for okay. Miss Ron and Guitar, respectively. And then, all right. Oops. There we go. Perfect. Go ahead and move yourself. So you can hear, again, as you're walking along here, the sound of the moving air in here. This is a very, very large place. And it seems as if it has suffered some kind of calamity. There's a lot of broken bits of uh, masonry and stonework and columns that have fallen aside. Mm. This place has the, also the layout as if someone at some time intended on visiting here once again. The Nords honored their dead most definitely, but uh, this does it not strike you as a quite large avenue, three meters across in order to mm -hmm. yeah. go along? You know, yeah. I balls the puddle in the middle of the way and tries to step around the edge of it, and he's looking both ways where he sticks himself all the way out. Yeah. There is a the notorious uh, first dungeon you go to in Skyrim, George. There is a puddle that attacks you. Is that right? No, no. <laughs> okay. I, I was like, that sounds like a different game that I thought you guys would want to play. Nisran, <laughs> I see something metallic and shiny way off in the distance. Hmm. Is it moving? Indeed. There does seem to be a door over there. Mm. I'm going to guess it is not moving. Does not appear to move. Mm -hmm. Anything Perfect. moves, though, aside from this one, stab it. Yes. Ron still has uh, tinnitus ringing in his ear from that mm. uh, time outside. Yeah, that makes sense. Why don't you guys each give us an observe check, too, please? <laughs> okay. No. Nope. Okay. What's going through your minds then? That's. I think, yeah, I think the ringing in my ear is driving me kind of crazy. And like, I realized how close I was to getting totally mauled to death yep. um, by that thing. Like, boom, like instantaneously. And, it was, and how strong it was. And Godar, he's typical, uh, you know, cat hunter mode. He sees something shiny in the distance. It's the object of what they're hunting for. And then he's trying to block out everything else but ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that He's makes like, sense. Okay. His tail's twitching like... <laughs> Go ahead and move yourselves. Yeah, if you move. dare. I mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, wait, dare. something just came up my screen. I think it's a mistake, Kevin. <laughs> I was going to clear it out. <laughs> Let's see here. And one more. There we go. Okay, so that seems to have collapsed almost entirely mm. Mm -hmm. to the left there. And that seems where there, uh, it appears as if there's been some kind of fundamental uh, failure of the uh, of the overall structure in there. Because it's the, on top of the actual masonry that's in there, uh, there is bits of the earth itself where it's caved in and mm. fills some of the areas. There's a cold that you can feel coming through there. Almost as this bad one, as it was when you were outside. This one hopes it squished a few skeevers. Yeah, you haven't yes. heard the squeaking in a little bit. Interesting. Hmm. I do not. Bl this one does not blame them. If I hear a wizard casting magic, I would. Uh, this one would flee too. Okay. Yeah, you said there's a wizard casting magic. I can't. Yeah. I, maybe I'm hearing Son, things. Do not speak so loudly. They will ah. find us. Oh, am I speaking loudly? I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, ringing in my ears. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a kid with a Walkman on him the first time. <laughs> exactly. The seats are known to be good boxers of ears. I could help. Mm. Now look at that. At the end of this twisting, natural... Mm. Interesting. ...corridor, there appears to be a solid metal... 
door. Istan, does your mm. magic work on that? It may. So to give context for how uh, powerful <laughs> those spells are, spells are in general uh, on a scale of one to 10 uh, for different levels of it. You have to learn them as you go along. Uh, so to learn a f f fifth level open spell, you need to first learn one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Got it, okay. Your open so spell is an open learned... one. I see. So like if I for fireball, I have a three. So I learned fireball one and two already. And Correct. now I have three. That's why yeah. you can cast yeah. them at lower levels is because you've already learned those things. I see. Okay, cool. Those are books you could find in the world. There's books you can purchase at a mage's guild or an alchemist or sometimes in other lucky places. You can take them off the bodies of other wizards mm -hmm. as well. And that's how you mm -hmm. learn new spells. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. So. All right. You could try, uh, yeah, I so, suppose. Well, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna like you know start casting magics uh, unless absolutely necessary. So, but okay. what I'm gonna do is start moving up here. I'm just moving up slowly, just in case something happens to me. Yeah. But all right, I get to the door, and now I'm gonna look at uh, what I have. What's the, you know the door, the mechanism, like what the situation is. So it is a. Oh, give us a lore check, please. Okay. No modifier to this one. No. Oh, okay. This one is uh, glad to travel with me, son. So you're mm -hmm. looking at this mm -hmm. thing, and so the Nords uh, definitely some came after the disappearance of the dwarves, because the dwarves disappeared in the first mm -hmm. era. Uh, the Dwemer, but the. The dwarves were the the uh, dwemer were around for a great deal of time and sometimes traded um, with not only the uh, Dunmer uh, elves but uh, um, they were contemporaries of some of the Nord invaders that were coming in. So either taken as prize by the uh, you know cleverest of uh, um, engineers among the Nords, and they would have to be exceptionally clever to be able to figure out dwemer. Uh, material or, or uh, technology. George, as you know, the Dwemer, uh, the dwarves in the setting have effectively kind of like a magical, um, tonal based steampunk type of technology. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. And it seems as if this has characteristics of dwarf and Nord. Uh, qualities to it i see more likely dwarven stuff repurposed in a nord content which means okay. it is going to be devilishly clever to get in and it may very well be impossible unless you have a way of accessing it okay um very interesting all right uh i'll sort of relay all that to uh Gadar. um uh, is, um... There is something else too. I will because you rolled quite okay, yeah. uh, quite well. Mm -hmm. So these kind of things, it's kind of um, one way of thinking of it is like it's almost like an unbreakable code, like where it just unless you have the key to it, it's just never going to be able to be accessed. It's so complex, so whatever okay. else. However, because of that, what is often done is the key is contained in the crypt somewhere, so you don't lose it. It's very yeah. important that you continue to have access to something, but they can take all sorts of different forms. Okay. So if you're looking at this sense. thing, um, I think you have an idea with a lore check of culturally what you might be looking for in order to access this stuff. But you could look at it from the perspective of um, subterfuge. Uh, or mm -hmm. what you could do is you could make a lore check and compare it to your perception. With the idea being oh. that you're trying to figure out what it is you might be looking for. Uh, that things? sounds like a good idea. I okay. think what I'll do first, just uh, non-mechanically, is um, pull out that dagger yeah. that we found that Gidar gave me and uh, see if it matches up in any way to, you know, to yeah. this door. Um, I think, is there a craft skill, guys? Um, can't remember if it's craft um, or I just put the, uh, I do not see craft. No, there's alchemy, uh, um, profession, yeah, that's what it would have been. Profession is engineering, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't think either of you guys have profession right no, now. No, untrained. Nope. So you could just give us a untrained intelligence uh, check as well. Okay. Just want to see yeah, this, yeah. something here. This, this, so I'm going to give you plus 20 to this. So basically add uh, or subtract 20 from whatever your roll before comparing it. Okay. All right. Uh, so... <laughs> uh can i spend a luck a point luck yeah point. <laughs> i mean i'd really like to look at the trap rules if, if uh you choose not well, to you but may, I, i'm assuming look, you still have another chance you still have another chance yeah. don't worry that's amazing <laughs> let me just roll a 20 come on let's see what happens come on roll 20 what do you oh nice. that is definitely better that okay. beats my intelligence to 39 okay so what um oh even better than that actually yeah, well, it would be because you're rolling. I thought you were going to roll one of the um, untrained skills. Uh, oh, so the yeah, would be yeah. just rolling naturally. All right, so yeah, okay, yeah. you're holding this thing up and like you're almost kicking yourself for having thought this because the steel dagger, well, obviously it takes skill and a degree of artistic, you know, uh, talent to make this thing. This thing is was made centuries, if not millennia, after whatever this thing was, okay, and that's it good. most definitely is not. What you are more likely looking for is something that will be more uh, of a dwarvish style creation. Okay. Something closer to, um, yeah. If you can think of it, uh, because uh, you have not uh, seen them, think of a, like um, an orrery made all of brass pieces or brass mm. spheres or things like that in, in cool. incredible motion that's the kind of like vibe you get from dwarvish uh, technology in here uh, i see yeah okay. it's there's a I'll, I'll post in our uh, chat afterwards um the uh the link there's a great uh, trailer for elder scrolls online that features some of the like robotic things that were made by the dunmer by the uh, sorry the dwemer the dwarves that are mm -hmm. super basically like really deadly and very fast moving uh steampunk brass robots yeah they're they're, they're powered by soul gems um they're, they're great yeah that's cool and i happen to have a soul gem yeah so i have a Pretty grand good. soul gem in fact um so okay so i will uh suddenly realize i haven't been speaking out loud um, yeah. Partially because they, yeah, I don't know how loud I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've just been, God, so I've been like figuring this out and thinking about these things and recalling things. And so then finally I turn over to uh, the turn around and and look up at Gadar and, and I explain. Um, we are looking for a, a key. It would be in the fashion of of the Dwemer. I do not know if you're familiar with the. I don't know what they call it. Some sort of technology. Gadar looks at you and he goes, "This one praises the stars. You were lost in your head so long. I forgot. I thought you would not come back." Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Yeah, my mind cast back many centuries. This one believes we must find odd-shaped key. Mm. I do not know what form it would take, but I think we will know it when we see it. Or at least we will know when we are close. Yeah, the, the, one of the complicating factors is, is you kind of have to um, be thinking both like uh, uh, Dwemer and like a uh, Nord. And Nord, right. Because it's got to be probably bits of both. Like when yep. this, not second, but one of the uh, things, one of the things that unlocks the first dungeon that you go into in the game is a strange claw looking thing that you have to fit into there. It looks like a candelabra that's been melted and, and twisted or whatnot, but it actually is a key in order to access somewhere else. Yep. Oh, that's so, cool. yeah, there's uh, several. Uh, I think thirteen or more barrows in the in the game where you have individual claws from black onyx to gold ones to emerald ones, and it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. it, do, are people familiar with this game? <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds awesome. I haven't, I have, I have not played. You've I, never I don't, played Skyrim. I have not. I don't really play video really games. Video to be game honest, guy, yeah. no. But I will say what I recently, very quickly, um, what I recently started playing was uh, with a VR headset. Yeah. Not the crazy like Apple version, <laughs> but uh, like a really relatively expensive. What used to be Oculus. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, it's it's really cool i love the immersion of it like it's it's mm. it's very cool and there's points where like it is really actually scary yeah, you can. It, you know, there is a mod you can play Skyrim with in VR. I don't There's know whether actually a VR release of Skyrim. Oh, really? Yeah. Skyrim's been released like thirteen different times. Yeah, it's so an like... exceptionally popular game. <laughs> I know that's what yeah. I was getting. I actually had a I had a meeting about Skyrim. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> like, yeah, two years, two years ago. <laughs> um, so as soon as uh, Skyrim gets yeah. the Game of Thrones treatment, I'm gonna be like, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know if it'll ever and anything will ever happen to it that way. It's it's my guess based on the little I know about it. But mm. we shall we shall see. It'd be cool if it, it was. No, I'm just the point is it sounds this sounds really cool, like a really good cool world. It's a really um, uh, so. the one thing I'll say for all their games, they seem to not only have like they're fun games to play, but the the lore now that I've learned more about it, like they've in, in Daggerfall is where they started with it. Daggerfall has something ridiculous like two thousand books you can find and read and that's where mm. all the backstory is oh, so that's like awesome. there's stuff that goes on in the game too but so mm. much of it is environmental storytelling and they duplicate yep. a lot of the books across the game so you can find the same kind of history of whatever else and then they add mm. on top of that and there's been five of them now because uh skyrim no six of them because if you include elder scrolls right because oh, oblivion was uh, elder scrolls four Skyrim yep. was Elder Scrolls five, 5, and then Elder Scrolls Online, 3, yeah. which f goes back in time, helps fill out a bunch of new shit too. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. the the lore is astounding. Mm -hmm. There's like three hour videos you can find online of people talking about Just... the reason that the dwarves disappeared, mm -hmm. which is not canonically mm -hmm. explained. It's That's just, awesome. Yeah, uh... they, they they dug too deep. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, and is it Bethesda? Who makes Bethesda? The, yeah. Yeah. Bethesda yeah. Game, yeah. yeah. Well, and so what's interesting about that is that uh, a lot of the people who worked there for a long time, and I think they're still there, but I'm not totally sure, um, came from both West End Games and TSR. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we talked about it at some point. Yeah. Um, uh, so Bill Slabson, it wasn't it? Who? Uh, Bill, yeah. Bill. Yep. I don't know if I pronounced his Star last Wars. name. Is it Slab? Yeah, that's right. Slabsek. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Ted, Ed Stark, who. Um, mm who worked at West End and then went to work at TSR. Um, who's been there forever. And then Zeb Cook was there for a while. Right. Maybe still there, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, but there's a, a whole collection of really great game designers from Tabletop, Yeah, which yeah. now doesn't and, surprise me. Like this game sounds awesome. And one of the reasons uh, like, you know, the whole uh, Elder Scrolls series has, you know, become so popular and had staying power is because they released a creation engine for the game. Yeah. As soon as it's out and made, they release it to anybody who wants it, and then you can make mods for the game. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So you can play the DLCs. game the way, like, one of the popular ones for <laughs> when Oblivion was uh, originally released and its official version, it scales to level. So, like, everywhere you go, everything's at your scaled level, which is different huh. than the way it was in Morrowind. So, one of the first things people mod was to just decouple that so there were parts of the world not everything is meeting you at your level right, right. so more true sandboxy yeah yeah you know, where you never know what you're gonna run into precisely yeah and then there's that's cool yeah it's cool and every one of the games have uh the similar things in skyrim the modding has recently i mean relatively speaking recently come to console as well too like I only, i've only played skyrim on console but i play a modded version of skyrim because you can yeah. add those on now and it yeah. changes like <laughs> the for, graphics for, or changes the way the combat works mm, that's cool yeah playstation yeah. doesn't allow script mods or like anything that adds new textures or stuff to the game um, but Xbox is almost completely open for all kinds of mods. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, sorry for the the the, the tangent, but I, I just was like, this is, oh, I, well, I need to play this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a fascinating, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a fascinating setting. I knew nothing about will, three months ago. I will look, yeah. I will look for, oh, that's right. Is that right? I thought I thought you had played it for a while. Um, I, I a John has, definitely. Yeah, that yeah. I definitely know. Um, which is great, thank God. Yeah. Uh, I will look, look for the VR version. That sounds up. Mm. That sounds cool. Okay. All right. Sorry. So I have said that there's a key we must find. Uh, probably is in the um, form of something we maybe don't expect, but not yep. in a typical key form. Um, and it's going to look like some combination of both. Um, do, is Dwemer? What's the what's the yep, Dwemer? Dwemer. Yep, here, Dwemer I'll put and uh, Nor and Nord um, cultures. In terms of what we're looking at, the Dwemer so are kind of like nice... the deep elves. Ah, okay, 
Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh-huh, cool. Um, so we may, it may be something that has that um, a combination of uh, of of Nord um, culture built on upon uh, the 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 even more ancient uh, Dwemer culture. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, interesting little it is not of this information. Way. Um, like the Nords and the Falmer, the the Snow Elves. Uh, Snow Elves like lived in Skyrim, and they were buttonheads the entire time the Nords came down. And the Falmer eventually made a deal with the Dwar- the Dwemer, and turned into something less than human elfish and yeah yeah there's Mm -hmm. a a great the backstory in the setting is just it's very very fucking cool Mm, the orcs are uh descended from elves as well like tolkien elves which is where they get uh their orcs orcs been the common folk but they're you know uh elves would refer to them as orzimer and again mer is the suffix because they were elves once right so cool yeah okay so where would you guys like to go Skeever hunting. Uh, well, Skeever's and and the key. Okay. All right, I'm following behind you. Moving half speed so that he can uh, we can be stealthy. Oh. Okay, so you get there, and then what you see turn towards you. Mm. You hear Gadar let out a uh, heavily whispered. Yeah. Khajiit oh, curse word that you don't say oh, in front of your man. mother. So, would you guys? <laughs> no one's surprised. I think uh, because of your absolute dog shit uh, <laughs> observe rolls, you and them are caught by surprise. But before we roll, well, let's roll initiative first, and then we'll do our fear Please checks. Please not nap time. Please not nap time. <laughs> yeah, one of them. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Oh, Last time we played this, uh, half the party passed out. Actually, that's not true. There's been a couple of times where we've had someone faint because they saw the undead. Uh, go ahead and go, ahead, go perfect. Thank you, guys. Uh, and then let me add. Yeah. This is not time to take a nap. What is? Oh, it's... <laughs> it was great. Okay. Yeah, one of the uh, pregens is an Orzimer, uh who has a. A fear of undead. He plumbed a little too. He got a really sweet axe uh, from a tomb, but in turn, unfortunately, he was chased out by undead, and uh, it's left him with a bit of a <laughs> trauma. <laughs> so he passed out dead away, and then uh, uh, John's character came in after. Was like, "What are you worried about?" Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, sorry, I got my stats here. All right, then let me roll, 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 two and four. All right, so two, that is, come on, you, and four. Let's see if this still works. Oh, and look at that, that's interesting. I didn't hit enter. Maybe because uh-huh. I clicked on another entry. Um, I just remember last time I had to, I could enter multiple things, but okay. these things yeah. are fortunately a little slow. So okay. first, before we get into our first round though, Nizran and Gadar, would you give us a willpower check at plus 30? So treat your willpower stat as 30 higher and give us a roll, please. Yeah, I need to get under 60. It is. Nice, 76. nice. Okay, both of you. That's a yeah. crit. Oh yeah. Uh, mm, there yeah. it is. Run. So. I will tease these undead to fear me. Why don't you <laughs> get a luck point back? Oh, awesome! Yeah. I'll take that. Okay, fantastic. Then Nizran, you are up for it. Put your three action points. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. And nobody is surprised, so everyone starts with their action points here. Okay. Nizran, what would you like to do? No. Um, can how far you, away are they? Can you see what you... It's not... No, I guess I can't see them. So, so you're... We're walking down and you see Godard look to his can left and he now? freezes as he's looking down that way. I moved you over nope. just to scooch here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I do right okay. there. Okay. So that's... <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm going to. So I'll move there. So you some my movement, and then I will. Cast, no, no, you get your free uh, movement. So you and remember, okay, you just put your move up. Your your movie that you get your free oh, move. Right, that is throughout team. your entire turn. So if you happen to right, do right. like on different initiative passes, you can split it up as much as you like. But the thing is, you okay. can't use that to interrupt. Only a dash as a secondary action can be on someone else's turn. Your movement does okay. have to be on your turn. Got it. Okay. okay, that makes total sense. All right, so I will uh, target the the this undead monstrosity yep. with a firebolt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and I will cast it at a level of two. Okay. Um, and I guess I will. Uh, is it restrained or unrestrained? Yeah, I think I'll cast it. Um, so what'd you say, firebolt? Let me do restraint. Yeah, firebolt. And I was gonna cast at level two. Okay. So um, one of the upsides nine. So uh, yeah. for magic damage, typically goes right through armor. It's only either magical mm. uh, armor or environmental protection. So like, if something's wearing a lot of fur, you're gonna have some protection from cold damage. Mm-hmm. That yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. I'm I'm going to start out by kick because I don't know any much about this creature at all. At all. So I'm going to just start out casting it with restraint. Okay. You would know this is likely a Draugr. Draugr are okay. the buried uh, dead, the ancient Nords. Um, they, whether by necromantic magic or just um, some other foul power, uh, they are unquiet dead and they do not rest mm. easy in their crypts. Mm. So yes, well, I do not want it to get any closer. So here comes a firebolt. Good call. Okay, I'm hold on. I'm just trying to decide if I'm going to defend oh, against it. I yeah, think it's going to block. Okay. Uh, so I got a one. I got a negative nineteen. No, but remember, you got to check your. How's that vessel? Uh, so you got a one as well. Right now, it's not a contested. Oh, it's fucking block. So I don't have to contest it. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, you said you were restrained. Okay. So it's only one d six, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Six and um, there we go. Four. Here's the, here we go. Ancient Nordic Shield. All right. So shields have a break rating, and then they have half of that against magic. Four, unfortunately, this thing, you begin weaving your flame bolt and this thing lashes out. It hits on the shield, spills across it, does not break it. Okay. Um, you resist my magic, my friend. Two more um, AP. Yeah, um, so two and more, uh, another uh, one of those could be an attack if you'd like. Um, can you cast magic a second time? In a... Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. Sure, okay. I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to cast it without restraint. Okay, hold on. You're. Yeah. How much did you take off your magicka for I that? I took five. Well, remember, you, you cast a bolt at level two, normally costs six, right? Oh, sorry. I was looking at. I moved my finger down to cloak. The right. next one on the on the yeah, list. Yeah, so six so I paid, minus. I had nine. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I was looking at clo the next. Spell. I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that means it would only cost you I one magic for the way you cast it. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, you're Claire. yeah. So yeah. then, yeah, yeah, you cast just... a restrained one. It hits <laughs> the shield. Okay. All right. So now I will cast uh, an unrestrained unrestrained one. Yep. Um, and you want to? I think you got up to level three. You can cast with that. Yeah, I can. Um, so I feel like why not? Um, it cost me eight points. Okay. Um, here comes a destruction roll. I Are succeeded with roll? a zero. I did not get a mm -hmm. crit. So as long as you get, you want a luck that point? A, that? That's a crit fail. Yes, I do want a luck point. It. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't know. We haven't seen uh, what happens on the crit fail for spells I yet. Know. I know. <laughs> I kind of don't want to. There oh, you there go. We go. It's a one. A one, Success. which means you beat me. Um, so that, nice. oh wait, it's a fucking block. It, go ahead and roll damage. Oh, right. First, so okay, and it's yeah. now so it's 1d8 plus six, one D eight. four. Yeah. On high damage. Ten. Yes. Ten, beautiful. So here's what happens. If you exceed the break rating of the shield, they take full damage. So look oh. at this. Yeah, that's, that's where block is like, it's easier to do, but it's a risk reward. You better have a good shield. I see. I so, thought it was just the excess. Okay, cool. No, no, it's it's pretty. The I, I had to go back and reread that a couple of times to make sure I had it right, but it's pretty yeah. sweet because it, the thing, thing is, it's the it's honestly the the way I think of it is like you're trying to get your shield up and you know like someone hits it and you fucking clark yourself in the head. 
Yeah. Right? Or yeah. yeah. All right. Then uh, look at that. Okay, and I was my turn is going to be be done at this point. Okay. Uh, all right. So then you are done your turn. Yes. Good job. What are you doing? Alrighty. Emboldened by the uh, rapid fire from the from Nizran, Gadar is going to move down one. Yep. To put that Draugr within range of its three meter spear. Yep. And he's going to one handed jab him with it. Go right ahead. Uh, I have already spent two. Yeah, I'm not going to defend. Say hello to your mother. <laughs> More success. Uh, that is a hit. Yep. Nice. And okay, good. Okay, so seven points of damage. That'll be um, now. Uh, if you wish to do the extra three cutting, these things are partially armored, so you will need to spend your advantage to go from partial armor to no armor in order to get the uh, i will do that yes yeah okay so that's to three 10 and then it's armor uh yeah, look at this yeah then i'm gonna choose to continue my movement okay three four five to get down here heavily regret my decision um, <laughs> does he look like he's ready to hit me? Oh, yeah. I'm going to spend a point to disengage. Okay. So you duck, dodge. <laughs> and then run back up here and says, that are more coming. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to hold on to my last ready. point. Okay, you okay. got it. All right. So then the <laughs> shield ones. All right. Uh, I am moving from... Uh, your range, uh, you could spend an AP to get a uh, attack of opportunity if you'd like. Yeah, I'll do that. Go I'll ahead. Spend a point. I'm going to block. Uh, I don't block, so as long as you hit. Mm. Hey, come on. Ah. Mm. 80, uh, 61 is higher than my uh, attack. Yeah, no. Okay, okay, so both he fails. So you swing, he tries to block, but he is able to step in. And he will swing with that um, ancient Nordic broadsword. Would you like to try? Do you want to spend a stamina point to defend? No. Okay. Um, I hit, uh, so with advantage, um, I'm going to treat your armor as one less, you're unarmored, and yep. you take, uh, eight points of damage. Ouch. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. As he hacks you, he then, these things move, a ver like, a as quickly and as, okay. um, are as Not canny of fighters as what, uh, living things are. So it gets the one. Holy shit, Gadar. Jesus. I only have 16 hit points. Yeah, you're fragile. Um, oh, a reminder, you each have uh, potions of vitality or potions of rejuvenation that restore either eight um, health or eight uh, magicka. So, cool. Gadar, you are hit by this thing, which is almost down and it seems to still be burning from uh, Nizaron's original spell. Uh, it is going to save its last action point. So the one that. down here <laughs> is going to step forward. And he only needs to get to there to swing that uh, Nordic Great Axe. Would you care got to reach to? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to all out attack as well. So I got plus 20 to hit. Jeez. Would you like to evade? You could parry your minus 20 with your spear, I believe. Yeah. What do you think? You have to spend a stamina I'm, point or are you trying to just take the hit if I hit? I'm just trying to say so my agility is 53 and be 20 less. Ugh. I'm just going to try to evade. Try to evade? You got it. Yeah. Okay. That's my best option. So it's contested. Uh, I rolled a two. Okay, two. And come on. Evade, evade. I got nice. three. All right, so he brings this axe down, and you're able to duck to the side, 
hits that, it breaks up a bunch of cobblestone. A power attack takes, uh, or an all-out attack takes two actions. Uh, he will use, uh, I'm gonna leave the rest for uh, attacks for opportunity. And then there is another one who is walking up behind this one. Mm -hmm. And I'll spend one to bank for defensing. Defensing. It sounds like I'm going to throw you out the window. <laughs> Defenestrating. <laughs> Defenestrating. Yeah. Uh, then there is a another that walks up. And seeing you guys behind there, spends one action to stow its shield, one action to stow its sword, and one action to get out its bow. Oh, mm. no. How is that string still intact? The Nords know how to make them bows. Now, Nizron, yeah. do you have any action points left? I do. I have one. Do you want to take an um, action? I do. I don't know if this is one or two actions. What I, I'll tell you what I want to do, which mm -hmm. is to take my own potion yep. of uh, vigorous healing yep. and give it and hand it to Gadar. That'd be two. Yeah. <laughs> Potions are always two actions. So you could oh, just... I will just use... Take it out. Yep, you got it. So you got um, it out. And can I? Oh. I still have some. I hadn't moved at all. Can yeah, I? Yeah, and you actually haven't yeah. spent a stamina point uh, this round. You could spend a stamina point, get an extra AP, and then feed it to Gadar. Oh, I'll do that. That's a great idea. Okay. Gadar, um, you get eight health back. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, my friend. I'm concerned. Okay. Th this one hurts. Oh, I think you should have three <laughs> stamina left, right? Yes. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Guitar, do you have any, any P, uh, AP left? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, the others are going to wait. Let's bank them for the start of the next round. Um, we are at the end of round one. Round round two. Guitar, or Nizran, you're up first. You get your three AP. Okay. What would you like this to do? One's, this one suggests nuking from orbit. Yeah, so I, 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 that's what I, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, so now that I see that there's two, uh, so I can only see these two, uh, obviously, from my vantage point. Yep. Uh, but now that I see there's two uh, in close proximity to each other, it makes sense to me to cast a fireball. Um, I like it. That's my plan. Yes. And what I'm going to do is fire, yes, I'm going to fireball without restraint. Nice. And um, you got to what, fireball And it's a three? two meter, I fireball three, correct. And it's a two meter, the AOE is a two meter sphere. Yeah, two meter, uh, two meter radius, I think, actually. Altar is caught within two meters. Yeah, it just says two meters, comma, sphere. End of the stat block. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, I think, it, let me t check at the beginning of the section. I, I wonder if it clarifies two meter it. sphere, AOE, like. Yeah, four yeah, says... and radius. Yeah, so, it says, and it says at the end of the entry, like damage to all targets caught within two meters. Yeah, yeah. So that's for sure right. a uh, so it's four right, meters yes. across, effectively. Yeah, um, great. Where so would I've... you, if you hit it in the back here, that's going to catch them. That's what I and will not catch. Oh, it'll catch Gadar. Ooh, it's only two be... meters from the point of impact, right? Oh yeah, yeah, two meters. Yes, yeah, yeah. So two. Yeah. So you have to hit it right here. So Sorry. I put a heat. Yeah, 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 I think I have it right there. So that's that's my myself. I'm gonna like target right. that spot. Uh, so again, it's without restraint. To be and twelve it's, uh, magica. <laughs> yes. Yes. Success. Uh, and they, I don't think we're expecting this. So I'm not gonna let them try and evade. Go ahead and roll damage. One d eight plus okay. four. Yeah. Here it comes. Five. Nice. Oh, really? shit. All right, so first yeah. one uh, is... Let me make sure I got... Wonder... Going almost four, three months without a, deleting a initiative tracker. We're trying Whoa, here. Oh, impressive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, give my track record. Uh, yeah, it's really... All right, right. that's what I mean. It's pretty good. <laughs> so um, okay. Options under spending stamina, we can add damage. Yeah. Um, like perfect hit. It I am going two, to each uh, point of stamina you spend adds plus uh, two damage. Cool. Uh, I'm going to use my second AP to yep. uh, cast uh, now cast a fire bolt instead. Okay. Um, also at level three, also without restraint. 
Okay. Get that other one that's still up. Okay, so it is going to try um, and block that. But go ahead okay. and make your... You know, I yes. got a zero degrees of success. I didn't get a crit. Zero degrees of success. Well, it doesn't block just automatically. Oh, it blocks automatically. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always right. forget that. So, uh, but go ahead and roll your... That was Is that your uh, second one yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. So 1d8 yeah. plus 4. Yeah. See if you can get through that, that shield again. Yes. Fuck yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, it hits it and spills across it, almost like water washing across. It just chars this thing's face. Look at this. Because there's no armor protection against it. Oh, so, yes. okay. this thing is almost an uh, inferno. Uh, nice. Now, hold on. 12. You know what? Wait, 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 wait. That's over its wound threshold, which means it is burning. Mm hmm. Let me make a, I got to make an agility check for it. I think to avoid the burning. Uh, but he does suffer a wound, so minus 20 to all actions. Yep. And where's the critical? Here we go. Nope. Nope. Yes, here we go. Pass an agility test or take burning one. I failed my agility test. He is on fire. Nice. Um, I like that it's Scottish too. That's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, it's on Scottish fire. We've been uh, my um, sister. <laughs> while my sister's been visiting, we've been watching uh, the the traders, uh, and the host is uh, it's set in Scotland, and the host is um, Alan. Uh, what the fuck's his name? The Scottish actor. He was in uh, uh, Cabaret. Alan Cummings. Oh, Alan Cummings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's cool. He's quite Scottish. <laughs> that's great like, are you a dwarf <laughs> or <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, people are relatively short there <laughs> mm. alright so that's so he is on fire he's taking one burning um, really until he puts himself out alright I'm banking my one AP okay so there's a and then a wash of flame that goes down the then Gadar what are you doing it's, uh, spending one point and I'm going to attack the burning one with my spear Okay. Like, get him while he's weak. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, I had to block, so I'm out of... Mm, yeah, I am out now, but that one died. And I'm out of uh, AP, so go right ahead. That is a hit, Two. and superior, eight. I think that's actually enough. Um, eight, you did get advantage because he could not defend. So, yep, that is enough to take him down. Nice. So that's one um, more like to do next. I'm going to spend one to disengage. Okay. And the free action is Nisran. There's one to this uh, down. Watch out for it. Okay. And then he's going to go <laughs> I love that you're five Scottish meters now too. over here. <laughs> and then he's bad. And then watch out. Two meters over here. Actually, maybe here. Um, and then that puts him in range to attack the guy with a bow. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to spend. You final AP. Yeah. Okay. Like mistake. Uh, that, oh, he actually has... No, he has no AP left. That's a hit. Uh, that is... Um, and for only for getting for yeah, damage. for superior. So you'll have advantage, which means you can hit the unarmored, which is nine points of damage. Um, there we go. And uh, I would like to... That, I'm going to wait before... I remind me of my stamina. <laughs> yeah, like, it's... I'm not sure... Th those um, extra damage ones can be really useful in a very situational thing, but yeah. to spend it on average, like, getting the extra AP is just so much yeah. better in my mind. But, uh, yeah, okay. And uh, remember, you can only do that to uh, that specific effect once per turn, each of the yeah. stamina effects. All right, so first up, we got the shield guys. Also, oh, god damn it, you ran away with the sh with the torch. Yeah, that's what I was. I was like, <laughs> "Oh, can I have free action dropped it?" <laughs> I mean, I don't think you would have thought about it in the moment. So. Yeah, I, I I like it. I think yep. it's I think it's good. We haven't really worked together very much. We don't know. Like oh. you're, you know, I think I think it's good. Okay, so Let's then see what happens. The... Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, you probably see some glow from it. I mean, I do. I probably, you know, well, I'll see silhouettes of things coming to kill me. That's all I'll see. Yeah. This thing has to walk. You can hear something walking near you. Oh, no. Oh, shit. It's wrong. Uh, uh. Yeah, I think. Um, why don't you give us an observe check? Okay. Um, this will be at minus. 
Oh boy, I think minus 20. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so nope. So you can't, you're, you're like, well, what's moving around out there? And there's the, in the pitch blackness, there's this. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to fall out attack to make sure I can get this hit too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I it hit, fell. but I had it to fell. spend two AP to do it. And this run, you are hit with an ancient Nordic great axe. Sorry. Uh huh. <laughs> Should have dropped the door. That's Which right. does. Uh, so you take seven points of damage. Uh, you you subtract the one point of armor you got. And okay. um, and then you're gonna take four points of bleeding next. Uh, the start mm, of your next turn. Start my turn. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, something hits you in the blackness, and then this thing will do nothing else. Um, then, oh well, wait, that was the big guy. I went with the wrong one. So the one that's with you, Gadar, mm -hmm. is going to spend one point to disengage. It's going to move itself back over here. With its move, and then it is going to um, aim and fire. I think you're in actually short range. I'm going to plus 20 to hit you. Would you like to evade? Or you got to spend a stamina point, I guess, to get the action point? I or you would like let me to roll? evade. You I are going like to evade. You're yeah. going to evade? Okay, so spend one stamina point. Okay, and... Okay. And I got... Uh, with the aim, I got a six. I don't think it's possible for me to hit that. You crit. Crits always trump uh, others. All yeah, right. Nope. So you're trying to get out of the way. Unfortunately, it fires at you. And the short bow, you will take. I'll use the... No, you succeeded in your evade, so I don't get advantage on you. So there is an upside oh. there. Okay. Yep, that's one of the benefits from, um, from succeeding but not failing. Uh, you are going to take, uh, th what is that, four points of damage. Okay, it's better than getting hit with an axe. Sorry, needs it on. Hell yeah! And, so, and what's <laughs> well, your yeah. uh, your armor is what two? Uh, it's one. Only one. Okay, so yeah, so you'll take uh, I guess three, three points four. of damage. Yep. Okay. Uh, then that is out of actions. Uh, Nisran, do you have any actions left? No. Uh, so, but you banged one. one. I do have one. Yes, it's right here. And you um, haven't moved at all. Uh, and I haven't moved at all. Correct. Um. So I'm going to move. Yeah, I'm going to disengage and I'm going to move. Okay. Um, so you're I spending can that see point the to... light over here. Yeah, so I just put it over my other pile. And I'm heading this way. So uh, uh, that's... Like that. uh, if you go... I don't know if they're... Yeah, if you yeah. go straight, you're going to find your way is blocked. Yeah, so so I, I'm not sure how to... Like, I, 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 it's total darkness for me. Like, I literally can't yeah, see yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, so what, here's what happens is out there. as soon as you yeah. take a step forward... This thing is yeah. going to spend its point to take an attack of opportunity on you. Okay, yeah. Um, you disengaged, and, though, right? I uh, disengaged first, but oh, still I ran Oh, yeah, yeah, ignore me, ignore yeah. me. Yeah, so oh, you'll, okay. get, you'll get to here, and that's when you can smell and feel like the next square ahead, there is something standing right there. You're like, fuck! Okay. But you can turn and move. So, you already disengaged, so... Great. You okay, great. So I'll go uh, maybe around him, and I can't one, actually see. <laughs> so you can tell me how far two, I actually got to. I can't actually see the squares. I love so You can't actually go through there. You can't move through enemy okay. squares. But you could oh, go back. Anything. There's the you would your character would remember that there's a second one, and if you're running down here, yeah, can that's, you see that's now? Good. Now I can. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you would oh, see. Oh yeah. This. There's. Oh, I see Gadar now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would okay. have been one, two, three, four, five, six. You still have okay. five squares of movement if you choose to. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see uh, Gadar move. pulling an arrow out of his shoulder. <laughs> which way is he facing? <laughs> which direction? South, uh, east, west, south. Which way? He's facing towards oh, the, yeah, uh, sorry, the, uh, back towards the west. Back. I see. Okay. So I will then go back. Well, no, you're pretty squishy, I've just realized. So, no, I'll, I'll stay up here. Okay. okay. And I'll stop there. That's my. Okay. That's me. That's my whole cert, everything. Oh, my um, AP. Could already have any AP left? I do not, no. Uh, they don't... He has some movement, though. Uh, one, two... Three... Four. 
Yeah. Oh, there he is. All yeah, right. So we're at yep. the top of the him. round. Nizran, you have three AP. What are you doing? Okay. So first I'm going to cast armor. Good call. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, I think, alteration, so, isn't it? That's correct. I'm going to have armor one. Okay. Um, so. so armor one will give you, uh, if you spend it unrestrained, uh, it gives you your willpower bonus uh, as a bonus to your AR. So it give you six uh, armor. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do unrestrained. Okay. Uh, let's see if I actually do it. I. I'll spend luck. Okay. To reroll that. Um, oh good. Okay. Is that a crit? That's a ten. No, I rolled a ten. Ten, not a crit, but that's a success yeah. though. All right. So what's your armor look like again? Uh, let's see. I have, uh, yeah, I did cast the last time we played. Um, uh, I forget how I described it, but I'm going to say it was, I think I, it was like a red viscous or transparent, translucent energy. That, like came around me and, okay. and infused itself into my, into my body. All right. So you got that. That's a one. Then that doesn't yes, count so as an attack. So you have two more AP. Great. So uh, now that that's, oh, you know what I couldn't find is what the um, duration uh, was of the of armor. armor? One yeah. minute. One minute. Okay, thank you. Great. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's um, okay, six, so then... six seconds round, so ten rounds. Great. So I'll use my second AP to um, firebolt three. Okay. This one that I can see. Um, unrestrained. Okay. Oh, I didn't... Uh, I'll, I'll d take off all of my uh, magic sure. at the same time. Yeah. Um, so here we go. <laughs> you going after Great Axe guy or Bow Guy? I'm going... I only see one guy. Okay. This guy here. Yeah. So go ahead and roll damage. I I can't uh, defend. I've wasted all my actions. Okay. So it was uh, one d eight plus four. One d eight. Ten. Ten points of damage. Look at this. And once again, right through the armor. Yes. It is smoldering okay. white hot into the flames that you've <laughs> unleashed from your hand. One more AP. I will bank it. Okay. You could attack with a firebolt again if you like. Do you want to try and take that I guy down? I guess that's true. I guess why not? I have enough magic. I was about okay. to just subtract it all. I'll do that in a, in a second. Um, so here we go. S exact same thing. Um, here we go. Uh, that's, I think that's less than your yeah. willpower. Yep, it is. Yep, go ahead and roll um, damage. Okay. Come on. Come on. Six. Six. Uh, oh, the ten was... Hold on. The ten was more than his uh, wound... No, it wasn't. It was equal to his wound threshold. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. So, right. two massive hits. All right, so Guitar, you're up next. What Guitar. are you doing? is going to play it a little safe. He's going to spend one AP and attempt to disarm the axe guy. Okay. I'm going to use my unarmed, uh, or actually unarmed means I have to be right up next to him. So you use your combat style. A combat style. Okay. So yeah. Wait, oh wait, does disarm. Does athletics are unarmed? Uh, let's see. Disarm uses, um, athletics or unarmed combat style test, uh, which can be opposed with unarmed combat style or athletics. Yeah. Okay, so I'll use combat style for mine. I got okay. a two. Okay, uh, so I can roll my spear since unarmed is part of my combat style? Yep. Okay. I got a seven. But did you succeed? 50 uh, against 53 your... is my uh, agility. Uh, for my combat style? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, then that's a success. Uh, hold okay. on. But, um, uh, bah, bah, bah. I'm trying to see if he, he's got a two-handed weapon. Mm. Target cannot be of larger size. It must be within one. Oh, must be within one meter. Oh, it did say that in the, uh, the reference sheet. Yeah. Um, in that case, I'll do a disengage to get close to him then. Okay, so that's... yeah, yeah. So then your character would have known that too, so okay. that's that's fine. So you just move yourself. Oh. You got to be yeah, right adjacent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So you get in there, you lock arms, and rah, his uh, armor, his 
axe uh, goes flying, give us a 1d4 roll. Eight. One. One is actually behind you. So it, 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 your strength bonus is a three. So it's three. actually one, two, three, four right there. Cool. Okay. That, this is just to, to keep him from hitting me with that big axe. Good call. Um, and does disarm count as an action uh, attack? It, no, no, it disarm counts as a special action. Okay, then so, I'm gonna use my last point yep. to use my claws on him. Nice, go ahead. You're unarmed, <laughs> I can't defend. Uh, ah, damn, uh, I rolled too high. Uh, okay, uh, then it is um, the end of session. <laughs> we're in you guys ran <laughs> out of time and we're gonna have to do another round, uh, so. You just see Godard like rip, you yeah. rip his weapon out of his hands and go yeah, for his yeah. eyes. And, uh, so that is, we'll leave our heroes engaged in, this is, I'm going to do the outro cool. and it's going to take us, you know, I don't want you guys going until, yeah, that's cool. Uh, times, but that is, uh, holy shit, Ms. Ron, are you out of magic again? Uh, I am, I was about to, ca I was about, in the next, um, when we return, I will be drinking a, uh, I owe you a potion, so you can regard. have my blue potion. Too. Okay. Nice. Thanks. I only have one left. Great. All Thanks. right. So we are, let's see here. Let me bring us back here. So for those. This, this game is fun. I am really Please. glad to hear that. That's, yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree completely. I think the the combat is, um, like, I know that the other fundamentals of the game uh, of just like skill checks and the setting and the kind of adventures you'd go on, like all that stuff I'm confident is gonna be as cool as any other game we run. Plus it's got an amazing crafting set of rules and creating spell rules and a great infrastructure for like harvesting from things and selling things and whatnot too. So really for me was the, you know, is the combat fun? And I'm really glad to hear that because God damn it, do I love running this? <laughs> that was so... going to be so clever, run down to see what was coming and get behind the guy and, oh, there's more of them. Crap. Yeah, like, I love how many <laughs> options you guys have, you know, to, to there, there's interesting things you guys can all do on a round-per-round -round basis, and it's not just, well, I'll attack again, well, I'll attack again. Yeah. I totally, and also the, you know, resource management of when you're going to do, you know, use your AP because there there's really good reasons why in real life, in a situation like this or in a game where you'd want to wait and like yeah. before you took an action um so uh, and it's but it feels still balanced it doesn't and it doesn't feel like chaotic it feels like everything still is like going through the normal initiative flow yeah um so I, yeah i like the or, and i like the um like the counter attack and the ability to to do certain actions uh after uh, like on other people's turn after they spend an ap feels really fucking dynamic it's not the like uh, oh. kind of turn-based thing you see in some other games where like someone moves away and then does a bunch of shit and whatnot. someone else moves up. The the bear chasing thing was was pretty fucking fun to, yeah. to see. Yeah. I'm like, oh cool. shit! Shit! Yeah. <laughs> that, that was great. And then <laughs> that's why I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, and I can, uh, I can, as a secondary action, I can do blind. Like, I can try to blind him. Yeah. So like, I was like, this is interesting. Like, because if he had stayed away from me, I wouldn't have done that. You know, like it, no. it really depended on what was, uh, the situation as it was developing in the course of the turn. Yeah, absolutely. The so, yeah. And the variety, like the the effective use and management of your spell casting uh, resources, likewise, is a, you know, guitar has got very minimal ability to on the spot kind of heal but like what a valuable thing to do to top up between encounters if you had yeah. a character who was specializing in uh restoration magic though like you can imagine how much more that would change how you're fighting because you got someone who can safely spam heals from further back too right yeah yep. that would make a big difference yeah um cool. that's cool yeah i make a habit of uh, using my fortified um uh agility more often so yeah because that really yeah look like it, it helps yeah with like and with these characters they're they're the sort of like mid-range of characters for starting characters so they still have okay. like tons of room to grow uh, as yeah. far as the capabilities and like the, the each of them i think only has one talent and there's like 10 pages of talents that are oh. available yeah tons of options for customizing the characters a shit ton of spells that we have like you guys and the different variety of spells too like the um, it, it's fun picking a whole bunch of spells for the characters to give like Nizron some versatility, but even then you have to sort of pick which things you're going to be really, you know, focusing on. Um, 
if I had a path I could take yeah. Gadar down, um, it would definitely be learn a bit of alteration magic because that's just amazing with these are on, but definitely focus and restoration and the bow. So yeah, and that's the thing that I love about it, is that the you about where at least what I think would be interesting in an ongoing campaign is that there's so many interesting things to decide on how you're going to develop your character. You know, because talents are not cheap, and you know, raising skills is not cheap, and and whatnot, and and also money. Like, there's also an in-game currency. You need to you got to buy those books if you want to learn the spells, right? Or you well, need to have nice. access to them in some way. So, um, there's lots of reasons to be doing the shit that you're doing in game. It takes some of the best ideas from the video games and adapts it to a tabletop role-playing mm -hmm. game, and I. I mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like the uh, a much not that not not to denigrate it, but like it's a more um, comprehensive ver experience as to what you were, we were doing with Baramaze, where like there's a reason you would go risk going out there, go plumbing down, and come back. Um, in this case, it just happens to be that there's there's a little bit more fleshed out uh, for how you're spending that loot and how you're selling it and whatnot and. You know, having a character in your party who's really good at the bargain uh, skill is a huge asset because you can sell that shit for more. You can purchase stuff right. for cheaper. So you're, you also like, there's lots of great different little niches for a <laughs> bunch of characters to be specialized in over the course of the overall campaign. But at the very core though, like combat in, in for a game like this, where there's going to be a lot of it, it has to be fun and dynamic. And like, this feels really good you know especially mm -hmm. if you guys have access to the the healing stuff there's peril and whatever else but it's not like oh fuck i just had one bad round and i'm dead right yep yeah so anyway i uh, definitely had a bad round but i still lived yeah really <laughs> you left the dark with an undead with a great yeah. axe <laughs> great. i was like huh? <laughs> <laughs> It was, that was fun. That was a good moment. Although I, technically, I you know, Len, like what you could have done uh, as well is if you had that one AP, what you might have done in, in in thing is as soon as he did that with his when he said he needed to dash, you could have spent an AP to dash a secondary action. Yeah, that's true. That would have been another option. Yeah. yeah. No scrap. I didn't know if he wait, was going to come back or not. So I was like, oh well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Which is good. It gives gives you other options. What's nice is when their options aren't like, you know. Clearly, you must choose one over another. Like it's like, yeah. mm, uh, I'll do this. Well, and the you synergizing when you have like we played uh, the la last time we played this particular dungeon, we had Nizron and someone else played Oleg, the Nord warrior with a shield, the sword and board fighter. Yeah, and mm -hmm. ha having a, a fighter that you can hide behind who is sucking up a lot of the hits and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I automatically started doing that. <laughs> and then yeah. I was like, oh wait, you have no. <laughs> You're squishy. Well, okay. Oleg, he also has uh, his talent uh, is uh, he spends one AP to defend for someone else. So with that big shield, yeah, boom, right. you're getting that in the way. Boom, you're getting that in the way. And he spent money to get a steel shield. So it's got a really decent protection rating on it too. So it's, it's awesome. neat. It's just like there's so many yeah. neat ways you can synergize the characters on top of that. So there just seems like there's nothing but uh, like really interesting possibilities with this game. Uh, yeah, setting aside how fucking cool the setting is and uh, mm -hmm. you know there's all these great books I've got for designing random encounters and designing like random uh, communities and random quests and shit like that and there's so much that you could do with this uh, a game set in Skyrim you could really That's capture cool. the kind of like uh, like the, there is all this amazing backstory and amazing stuff but like the thing that makes the games really engaging right from the get go is because you're like Oh, I mean, this you walk into a, a you know a shop and a guy's fighting with his wife his uh, his sister because she wants to go and track down these bandits who stole their heirloom like that claw thing I mentioned before bandits came in and stole it from them that's sort of what prompts you wanted this mission in the first place so they're very like they feel very grounded and like oh so and so needs help with this okay this is the thing I'm gonna do and it just spills out into these much bigger and grander kind of things. Right. That's cool. Yeah. I like it. So anyway, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for our another impromptu return to the northernmost region of uh, Tamriel. Uh, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, uh, the campaign, or the game we're playing, five sessions of this so far in the playlist, so I think we can count as a campaign now. 
kind of. Um, the please don't hesitate. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Uh, there, you can also find a link in the description of the video to the Dungeon Musings Discord server. And we've been talking about this game over on the Assorted Games channel. I posted all the character trees for these characters as well too. Uh, so if you are interested in seeing what these characters look like, uh, you're welcome to go over there. Again, you can find a link to these books, all the books that I used for today, the core rulebook and all the various scrolls they've got for supplemental material. All that's available for free uh, through those links. So you're, feel free to go through there, check out these uh, books. We're playing with the third edition, but you can access the third and the RR edition over there. The, I'll leave it to you to figure out which uh, the difference is between the two of them. Um, I'm preferring the third edition, but both look like outstanding games. Um, there's also a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent unionized retailer of hard to find and out of print RPGs in North America. Not only do they have an amazing selection of new role playing games, board games and card games, they have an unmatched selection of hard to find and out of print RPGs. Um, and if you make a purchase of $10 or more through their website, be sure to enter the code MUSERWINTER uh, and you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. There is also, um, uh, that'll change as of April 15th, uh, 2024. So if you're listening to this after that time, come back to one of our more recent videos and you will get the current discount code there. Um, I will also mention that uh, uh, Noble Knight has an amazing feature called a want list. So if they're extensive collection uh, that's listed, they don't have something in stock you want, you can put it on a want list. They'll send you an email when it comes in. And it, they seem to also guide some of their purchases from um, as a, you know, from people who are selling their collections or selling books uh, by that want list as well too. So you can uh, get an email uh, and you can pick it up at your leisure. There's also a link down below to something called Heroes Save Villages, which is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, an incredible organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children, including a bunch of ongoing relief efforts in crisis areas right now, which you can learn all about by following that link. And if you follow the link, you can also find information uh, or you can also make a donation uh, to them and all donations that go through that link go directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And uh, as a small way of saying thank you, we have been running charity sessions for the first half of this year uh, to thank the generous donors to uh, from last year. In the mid-year, we're gonna be running something uh, special that'll let the donors from this year donate, but we have something special planned for May. Throughout April, we will be having donors who have donated since January 1st, 2024, voting over on the Dungeon Musings Discord server for an upcoming, it seems like at least three sessions of a Star Wars role-playing game. So we're gonna be playing something for May the 4th this year. And this year we're gonna be doing it as a fundraising thing for Hero Save Villages and people will be voting on which era which kind of heroes, which kind of villains, and what RPG we're gonna use, because we have a whole selection of great uh, Star Wars role-playing games, including one that our buddy George has his name on. So uh, the West End Games Revised Edition will be one of the options that we will have for it. It happens to also be the favorite version of Star Wars from one of our players. So will that be the one that makes a selection? We'll have to see, because we have a lot of options to choose from, from different Star Wars games and uh, also a huge variety of different settings. And we will be including current canon as well as non-canon so if you like your heir to the era uh, heir to the empire or your dark empire or your legacy era stuff those will all be on the table for donors to vote on so and once we have everyone vote on that stuff we'll be playing those sessions in uh on may 4th uh, so we look forward to uh celebrating may the 4th in a proper uh star wars mm -hmm. manner um the last thing i will say though is an enormous thank you to our stalwart players uh we were down uh, very very surprisingly we're down to quite a few players over the last day or so um and uh, i joke about it uh, quite a bit guys but i can't uh, i really appreciate you jumping in and getting even more time in with this game i absolutely love running and uh, preparing and running this game i can't wait to 
this was a shit ton of fun. It makes me all the more excited to run a um, a more substantive, something more akin to what I would run with other RPGs. So John and George, thank you very much for letting me return to Skyrim once again. I'm very sorry I didn't kill either of you tonight. I'll, I'll, yeah, well, you tried. No, I'll try yeah. much harder next time. <laughs> the, the bear was the scariest part. That was scary. The bear was, was fun. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. If Skyrim I gotta, bears are terrifying. I was rolling fucking 92s and 91s on all my attacks. It was brutal. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> yes, just could not get a hit to save my life. But that is the way it goes. So then, for those of us coming home, we, we should be back in the Stolen Lands in two weeks' time to continue on with our, our, our Kingmaker campaign. But until then, we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles, excuse me, that our uh, heroes have encountered um, in their first couple of days in weeks, I guess, in the northernmost province of Tamriel, Skyrim. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. <laughs>